I hope you can hear me. Yep, I hope we've got sound. But today I was going to make something a little bit silly. Well, I say it's a bit silly. It's going to be quite useful, I hope. Well, I nicked this earlier for my missus. Because I knocked, knocked this up for the missus for her tablet. That's what it is. It's a tablet holder. And this is my tablet. And I've been using that on my live streams in the studio. And I nicked that because it doesn't fall over. So I thought I'd make myself one. For the studio, upstairs. Just in case you're wondering. I want to make a little bit of a different one than that. It's a bit boring, that one is. That's the missus, so she can have boring. I'm going to do myself something a bit more fun. Yeah. I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me? Let's have a look. Let's see what's saying. Dee, 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 dee. Can you hear us okay? Please tell me if you can hear us. Right, what I'm going to do is, I've got the heat, gas heater on at the moment. I'm just going to turn that off because it's a bit noisy. Um, I'm a bit worried that it's going to be a bit noisy. I am busy streaming today. I haven't done a live stream in the workshop for a few days though. So I thought I'd better. I want to make something anyway. So I'm just going to turn this heater off down here. Bear with me. Because it's very, very noisy. And also, it's took all the oxygen out of the room because it's a gas blow heater. And there's a bit of an overkill from here, but it's great for blasting the space. Yeah, before I start. And then the wood burner, which is over here. I've lit that, just about. And I'm sawdust burning today. So I've got one log in there, that's what I tend to do. Let me show you. I've got one log down in there. And the rest of it is just sawdust. And the log just sort of keeps it in, but the sawdust it just slowly burns because the air is drawn in via this pipe here from my very daft punk. <laughs> Made from old wheels and bits of old chain. I don't know what they're about, but I, I get carried away, I think. Um, and the oxygen gets into the middle of the fire, so it carries on burning, even though it's sawdust. Normally, if you do put sawdust on a fire, it'll go out. Yeah, smother it. <gasps> a bit like how I'm feeling here at the moment with that blooming gas heater going. So, anyway, the plan is to make a phone holder stand thing. Well, I've got to say, a bit like this thing here, but well, a bit boring, isn't it? I don't like boring. I either like loud, crazy stuff or just interesting stuff. That's not interesting. I made it in a hurry for the missus because she needs something to put it. So I knocked it up and she, she loves it. She uses it all the time. Pop it in a minute because I just nicked it. <laughs> so I can show you. Anyway, this is my little tablet. Which I bought this for my drone actually, for my, my previous drone, drone than what I've got now. But I, I, I've been using it for my live streams where I use it for the chat. It seems to work okay, sort of okay. It's still a bit um, small for me to see in the studio. But anyway, I need to put that on the stand. Yeah? Well, I've got phone holders over there, phone stands that I've, I've made for Etsy and what have you, but I need one that can hold this nine inch tablet. And this is a Samsung tablet, that is. I would never buy Samsung again. No. Anyway, here's stuff that I prepared earlier, and that's my Death Star. So that is going to be a part of the design for this phone holder. That it is. Now, <laughs> I've already glued it on, I'd like to say. And what I've done is I've, I've stuck some tape on there. Hello, Peter Dallas. How you doing, buddy? Uh, ooh, you enjoy my project. Ooh, ooh, come back. Ooh, ooh. What's the problem with this thing? It's jumping off. Hello, Ginger Giraffe. Hello there. Yeah, you're on time. Only just started a few moments ago. Just so you know, I'm making a... Phone stand, sort of like that, but I'm Star Warsing it, or Death Starring it. <laughs> but the principle's the same. So theoretically, we just basically something like that you can plug that in and it doesn't fall over. That's the idea. And this one's quite heavy, you see. It's just, that's quite sturdy. That's the missus one. She's got the old 10-inch tablet thing. Um, I personally don't like tablets. I prefer using my phone. But it's a bit hard using the phone when it's over there. Looking at you, because that's what I'm using to record this on. And I've, done, like, I've stuck my, my little design on there. That's going to be cut out on the scroll saw. That is. And um, it's, a bit of, it's just a bit of an old, rough old bit of oak that I had laying about. And I've used, put tape on first to make it easier to remove this. So all I've got to do is peel that tape off and the design comes off at the same time. So it's just, just another way of doing it. I, I mentioned it in a previous video doing it this way. So that is going to theoretically be the bracket. So this part here, on the back here, which is just like a little, you know, little angular bracket, is literally going to be a Death Star. That's the idea. And I'm doing it in two tim timbers. I'm going to, partly because I've got it, this bit of pine, 
I've got laying date, which is a bit of laminated. That was like two boards. And I'm going to do it with oak as well. So the bulk of it is going to be in pine, but the actual death star is going to be in a block of oak, for which I hope I get time to ebonise. Now, before the end of the show. So we can ebonise it, hopefully we can get it to dry out and get a finish on it as well. So we're going to ebonise it. We're going to turn it black. Oh, exciting, eh? Yeah, we've got to make it black. Make a black bit of wood out of a brown bit of wood. Oh, sounds like a plan, wouldn't you say? So, yes, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm wigging it a bit. <laughs> Apart from that bit I have prepared. So I think the first thing we really need to do is cut this out so it can be... Um, be ebonised and then be drying out and while it's drying out we can then get on with the main part of the actual phone stand or in this case a tablet stand it could be a phone stand you know you make it a bit smaller and be a phone stand then we can still put a phone in that if you wanted to Just might be a bit kind of like drowned by it i suppose so we will be doing a bit of fretzel so i'm gonna get sorted out for that get prepped up for that Oh, I brought a little beer in here, a little rubbish old beer. But it's just a. Uh, God, it's so dry. <sighs> okay, so. Surprise, I turned that off and the, the temperature's dropping already, even though I've got the wood burner on, but it hasn't come to temperature yet. It's only been on about five minutes, the wood burner. So we're going to set you up over here. Could even do the pyrography again with the um, with the, with the actual Death Star. It's a possibility. So we'll put that there, and hopefully we can bring you down here to the actual fret saw. I love this machine. Now, if I haven't told you before, I think I have. I refurbished this. This is quite an old um, American craftsman um, fret saw, um, which has to run on a transformer because it's only one ten volt. And it's it's a good machine. It's got a few little problems with it in the sense it's design wise, but on the whole it's so flipping solid. And also it's got full adjustment on the bearings. And I paid about 20, 30 quid for this, but it was a rusty mess that I brought into the I did a video actually it's on this channel um, of actually refurbishing it. It was it was just oh, it was a complete mess. But it's great now. It does the job for what it does what I needed to do anyway. Let's put it like that. So I'm going to just remove some of the excess paper and all that flopping about and getting them away. So we're just going to... Oh, caught a bit. Just move that. I was just getting away and I wouldn't know what I'm holding, what I'm not holding. The other thing is I've got to be aware at the bottom here, I need to make sure I've got enough contact for it to mount. So I'll probably, instead of going in at this point, I'll probably bring that down straight so I've got a bit of a mounting area. A really ropey bit of oak. That's right for this. It doesn't matter for this job, does it? It's not exactly a window, is it? I will use the actual um, biography iron for some of these details, such as this one, and the actual big laser. There. Stop opening the laser. Yep, so that one there. I'll do that with the biography. I'm going to just cut this out as it is, apart from the little extra bit at the bottom for mounting. And if you can imagine that, that is, literally lends itself to be a bracket. Yeah, because it's whatever angle I have here, whatever angle I have on the base, whether it be that or whether it be that, it could be any angle because it's round. Because it's a Death Star. It's round, isn't it, Death Star? Okay, I shouldn't need to undo this, and hopefully it doesn't break on me. Uh, I need some wax. So where is the wax? Summons the wax. A bit of candle wax will do. Okay, I've got a block over here. Perfect. Come back, don't worry. Don't worry. I don't know why, but I've still got my slippers on. <laughs> got my slippers on. I, I ain't got my Yoda slippers on. No. So I'm just going to make sure there's a bit of wax on here. And the reason why I'm waxing this, if you watched my previous video, you probably know, but the reason why I'm doing it is because what it does, it actually provides lubricant for the blade. So every time that blade goes on a downward stroke, it takes a bit of the wax and then lubricates it as it cuts. That's why I do it. Now, if you do a bit of fretzel work and you're wondering why it keeps lifting the bit of wood up, there's various reasons for that. One is because you're not obviously holding it enough, <laughs> hold it down tight enough. The other thing is your stroke might be really short. 
And if the stroke is shorter, the, that, that's the distance that blade moves up and down. If that distance is shorter than the thickest thickness of the piece of wood, you will get clogging in the cut because you're not clearing all the sawdust out of the way. Anyway, I digress. So let's have a look. So, oh, look at that. Oh, it goes up and down. Oh, wow. Well, let's push that over there. I don't want to create too many highlights. I can see anyway. Perfect. Oh, awesome. okay. Saucy. So let's get to it. First of all, let's just see what you're saying. Da, 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 da. You made a tablet of stone. Oh, why the hell not? Out of stiff cardboard that'll do the job. And the sound is fine. That's what I like to hear. Good. Probably getting a bit noisy now because I'm going to be using this machine. First of all, I want to create this extra little area here for mounting. So will I have it at a slight angle? Maybe. We'll worry about it in a minute. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to create an area and then I can trim the bottom to suit. Because I'll probably have to trim that on my crosscut saw anyway, my regular arm saw, to make sure it's perfectly smooth. So I'm gradually, well, it's very slow and gently pushing it through the blade. You've got to allow the blade to do the work. I'm not trying to bend the blade, otherwise you're likely to break it. You'll create too much heat, and that's when the blade will break. And these are fret saw blades. So every so often, it's a good idea to stop and release it. Because I've got a tendency of pushing against the blade. Now you can buy fret saws really cheap. If the, you, a comparable one to this would be a lot more money. You'd be spending around four or five hundred at least. Um, even though this one's it's got stuff about it that's not very modern, but it's um, it, it works very well. It's solid. That's, that's the whole point. <laughs> It's quite a hard piece of oak because it's right near a knot. So I do need to be careful. I need to be careful on, you know, I don't want to be overzealous with cutting it. It's just a decoration. The other thing I'm not going to do, I'm not going to put, overly do the detail on the back here. You see there's lots of fine areas. Um, the grain's going this way. So all those little bits potentially could break off. So I'm not going to make them as fine as that, like that pointy bit there. I'll, I'll, go, I'll just take that square off and same on that pointy bit there. Obviously, potentially, they're just going to break off. artistic license as well. I've not been too critical about it. So I've got that pointy bit there which I can make it a bit wider. So I'm just not going with the flow really. Yeah, it don't have to be a Death Star, you can, you know, you can have a dog or a cat on it, can you? Or a heart for Mother's Day, Mother's Day and, you know, or Valentine's Day even. Oh, there they If you do that, you risk of breaking it. Let's remove some of this excess material. Remove that 
part there. You see, I mean, I've sort of softened some of the details, so not quite so fine as some of those details because they're just got, because the grain's going that way, they will literally break off. The false economy. Blades a bit on the coarse side for these sharp turns, but like I said, I'm not too worried. Yeah, sometimes we get a little bit hung up on things, don't we? Every time, to, oh, I've got to follow the line exactly, but as long as the the overall gist of what you're trying to create is, is good. If I was obviously trying to pattern something for a customer, well then obviously it has to be exactly the same. But not this, no. my light again because I'm not moving enough. it's literally just up there the centre right above my head just up there because I wasn't moving the lights went out Right, so <clears throat> that's pretty much done. So remove that section here, and this bottom bit here is going to be more effectively going to be where I mount it onto the actual base of the phone holder. Now, if you can see, I've got these details. I want to, you know, effectively draw in with the um, biography gear iron. Now. I could argue, do I need to remove this? I do need to sand this in a minute, but I might do that afterwards. How, how rough is that behind there? Well, it's fairly rough. Now, I'm going to do it first, then I'll draw it in afterwards, because it's pretty obvious what it is, isn't it, where it's got to go. Like I said, I'm winging it. It's raining outside now. We had all that lovely weather. The temperature got up a bit, and this is why I'm, I used the tape, if you can see. This makes it easy. You don't get, left, get the glue on your piece of wood. It's not a big deal. Now, we're going to sand this. Ah, that's interesting. So there was a floor, there was a crack in the piece of wood there. And it's not surprising because there's a knot just there. And um, what's happened is the actual tape has separated the piece of wood. Now I could say to myself, okay, then I need to fix that. I'll glue that back on there if I want to, this bit that, that pulled off. Or I'll just cut it off and say, well, why am I worried? It's not a major, major issue. So I might just chop that bit off. Elaborate a little bit down the bottom here, then remove it. So what I'm going to do. And 
doesn't matter. Does it help? <laughs> so yeah, I'm quite happy with that. As you see, it's a big old knot there. It just says big knot. So it's a bit rough. A bit of wood's a bit rough. So what we're going to do is now we're going to now take that. I'm going to use my linen shirt. I ain't showing my linen shirt. It might be a bit dark, and hopefully you'll be able to see it okay. So we've got a basic shape. So first of all, I want to sand both faces to make sure they're smooth, ready to go, and maybe a little bit round on this face here. And and then we'll draw in with the pyrography arm, which is like a hot iron, and and mark the um yeah the bits, the extra details. At the moment, it looks a bit weird, doesn't it? You don't know where you what it is. So that we'll have to make it look like the Death Star, and when it's black as well, because it could be black. We're going to ebonise it. Now we're going to get a reaction with the tannoids. Tannoids? The, tan <laughs> the tannins in the wood. That's the plan, anyway. And we're going to go through into my really messy workshop through here. Oh, there's a door. It looks like lion witch in the wardrobe it is. Ooh. Oh my god, it's too dark. I'll tell you what, let's put a light on. You can hear the old um, rain on the roof. I don't usually use this area very much, apart from preparing wood. This machine here what I use to cut the, the wane edge, you know, the, the edge of the wood that has the bark on. Effectively, that saw there slides along this rail and then, because the rail's straight, it chops off the edge of the wood. But you can see here, there's a piece of wood there already. There's one I prepared earlier. So, we've got more light over here, so we do that. Da -da, a little bit more light. Anyway, this is my initia, or you could call it a big belt sander if you like. And uh, I use this quite often for sharpening, believe it or not. Very, very good for sharpening because I had this table here machined flat, so it's perfectly flat. And then I use that for the actual belt for sharpening, it works really, really well. But we're not going to use it for sharpening today, we're going to use it to sand each face this piece of wood. It might be a little bit dark, but we're not going to be there for long, and it might be noisy too. Oh, my diddy yarn, my giddy giddy yarn. <laughs> So I've got the worst of the little ripples in the wood. Oh, I'll turn my lights out of here. Burning electric, it's not good, is it? And this is why I do a lot of electrical bits and pieces and welding. And over here, we've got my metal cutting chop saws and, like I say, my linen shirt. Uh, and then my rail saw, another bench over there. Uh, which I quite often use for um, and shutters and what have you on. When I don't want to take up space on the other bench. As you see, it's not as tidy, is it? It's not as pretty in here, no. But we'll do, maybe it will be one day. But it's work to be done. Anyway, I've got another little um, thickness there. And then we've got a spindle moulder. So it's like a big router. Think of a router on steroids. And I haven't used this thing for absolutely ages. You know, sometimes I use it for um, sanding. But that's a good machine, but I don't have so much need for it anymore. Oh my God, I left the lights on again. Turn it off. <laughs> Terrible, isn't I, eh? And, um, so, yeah, this, this generally, well, I was making a lot of my shutters. When I get really busy and dizzy, Someone's in the help, and he'd be on this bench, and I'll be on another bench. So we'd be dabbing up and um, building shutters together. Um, and that was kind of the main source of our income here in France, but that's all dried up now. Because <sighs> my um, customer base was mainly English, looking for somebody who spoke English. And, um, you know, a lot of our French, French, we do have a few French clients, but nowhere near enough. And it kind of dried up somewhat. And I kind of lost hot heart in a little bit, to be honest, because it all went a bit crazy because of Brexit, as you know. But I'm not doing politics. No, 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 no politics. So there we go. We have our partly created Death Star. And I'm, I'm asking myself, do I put the same thing on both sides? Or do we have a back and a front? 
I might put the same thing on both sides. Mm, decisions. Anyway, we need the pyography tool. That's why I'm a bit of a tool, so I've been told. Oh, it's plugging over there. So we've got the pyography. Got that. Maybe I'll plug it over here now. Let's plug it in a bit closer. Sorry, you can't see that, I know, because I'm wandering around like an like an empty I am. So we have our biography set here. So it's, it's a basically a heated iron. In this case, it has a wire, not not like a, like a soldering iron, like some of them are. They don't work that well. This thing's brilliant. And there wasn't expenses. China. I might leave a link in the description actually for it. See so if anyone's interested. It was only about 30, um, 30 pounds, is what it was. It's really good as well. It works brilliantly. Really hot. It burns like a good one it does. You can even brand yourself with it if you really must. I don't recommend it because I reckon it will hurt. Blimey. Okay, so first of all, I've got to transfer my little design onto there. So I'll give myself a bit of an idea. Ugh. I've got the one I prepared earlier. So bring it back down. So look. So I keep jumping you about. Now I can actually transfer this on. Literally, we're burning it straight through the paper. There's no need to do that. So I could probably wing it. But you see, what I could do is that could be created with a compass, which I happen to have one here laying about because I can put it away from the last. If it goes big enough, that is. Actually, <laughs> it does. All right. So we can create that shape. On here quite easily. Back there, Reagan. Yep, I'm happy at that. That's pretty good. And we know there's an like an oval circle there. Now one way of doing that, I could literally just cut that out if I want to, stick it on, draw around it. I'll just do that. If I've got some scissors to hand, we have. So let's cut that out. And the thing is still sticky because um, it's got tape behind it, which is going to be quite useful. Now I want to do it this way instead of just winging it because it, what it does, I can see if, if my positioning more than the shape because the shape is easy to draw, isn't it? Um, make sure it's in the right place basically. So it's going to be sort of like there, like that. Now my original design was um. A bit close to the edge, maybe, but once it's actually drawn around, it'll be fine. Original design is literally I cut that out around there and around there, and the hole down the middle um, using the fretzel. But I decided I'm going to use the pyography because it, for a start, it's going to be done so easier, and I, th I think it'll look better. If I'm absolutely honest, because I could literally shade the whole thing in with the pyography on, make it look really stand, make it so it really stands out. And I'm probably going to ebonize this. So I'm going to turn it black. That's my plan anyway. If you wonder why I'm doing little short strokes instead of trying to draw all the way around it, it's because the grain influences your um, where you're drawing about basically. And I'm going to just push right through this. So I'll create a little dimple, and then the rest of it, I, can, I can just wing it. Take it off again. Yep, there, so that's where the, the little eye is. Um, so now what I'm going to do is look at the. Um, <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm going to use a stool. Oh, I need to make a wood a workshop stool. That might be a project, mightn't it? Ah, hello, Peter. Anyway, before I get on with this, let's, let's just check these chats. We've got ten people here. <coughs> Excuse me. Squeeze me. Not because I'm ill, just because uh, I literally swallowed the swallow saliva in the wrong way. <laughs> oh, Jasper. Yeah, you could use a rope. You could use a rope to make it stand out more for this if you wanted to. Um, a bit of relief. It's not a bad idea, actually. But I'm going to do it with the pyrography because that's kind of what I've got planned in my head. And I can actually burn quite a bit out, actually, with pyrography if I want to. Uh, all the right place. The <laughs> Blake 7. Oh, my giddy up. No, that rings a bell. Crikey, Blake 7. That's a blast from the past. I can remember watching that many old man. A barber. Blake 7. Oh, God. That was ridiculous, wasn't it? I, I loved all those old... Um... <laughs> Anyone remember Barbarella? 
Oh, there's a Blake 7, but come on, Bennett. Those are strange things we used to see. Okay, I turned it on. Power's on. I'm going to get to it. Dee -dee 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 -dee. So, okay. So, who we got here anyway? We've got Jasper. We've got Peter. We've got Ginger Giraffes. She made a tablet stand out of cardboard. Dee -dee -dee -dee. And P. Dallas. Kit Kat. Ooh. Kit Kat rings. Oh, I've been. Yeah. Busy today. Jeez. Good afternoon from freezing Belfast. It's trying to snow on off. It's actually really cold and wet here today. Um, temperature's not so bad, but apparently the nighttime temperature's going to really drop below freezing tonight. It's saying about minus two, so it isn't too bad. Too bad? No. Nope. So basically, what this thing does, it puts current, electricity, I think on one side being positive, the other side being negative, and that thing then gets hot. Because effectively you shorted the two contacts out. And it's a special piece of wire. Now, I actually really like this thing, it's really good. So let's get to it, shall we? You're gonna have to lose my beautiful face. Ooh, there we go. Right, so that is on. I got it on 600 or oh, loads. That's, that's enough. Press my button. Let's see what happens. I think we want to put that on there eh, before I get too carried away, because yeah, it gets a bit warm. Yep, it's getting hot. Takes a few seconds to heat up. Just check on it. Oh, yeah, it's hot. <laughs> Did you see that? All right. Uh, so I've got a scrap here. I'll show you one. So there's a piece of wood here. Give you the idea what it does. It burns. Yeah. So quite ferociously, if you want, you can really create a lot of, you know, indentation. So hopefully it pans out okay. So you can't go be two of his heads. What happens is you'll end up following the grain. Because some parts of the grain are harder than other parts of the grain. So it'll um cool the bit down quicker as well as you as you use it. So as you say it's quite a potent tool. I'll turn it down a bit if I want to, but I don't want to. It's fun. Uh, we're going to be using um, the ebonising technique. Once I've done this bit, we're going to ebonise the piece of wood as well. And then that's going to get wet. There's no problem with that. So it's going to, then it's got to dry. So while it's drying, we're going to get on with the actual stand portion itself. This, theoretically, is a reinforcement. It's going to be the bracket. It's not just about being Star Wars. It's going to prop up. The holder, the phone, the phone holder itself. No, I've been thinking to myself. I want. I'd, I really would like to build a fairly large um, Millennium Falcon. I've got it in my head. I want to do it in wood. Fairly detailed, and probably about well, maybe full size of the model of the original model. So it's going to be it'd be over a meter long. I don't know if that might be too big. Uh, I am somebody who likes to do model making anyway, so. Usually flying models, though. I don't know if I can make them leaden rock falcon fly. It doesn't look very um, aerodynamic, aerodynamic to me. Now, now we've got the, the big laser beam bit to do. So you see, we've now got that shape. Rest my hand a little bit. The old carp, not constant grip and affects my old carpal tunnel. Right, <clears throat> couple times too bad these days to be fair. The button on this is quite a stiff though. Let's let it heat up again. Now the original design had like two lines. I'm not gonna worry about that because if we did two lines, it might look a bit odd because the actual burnt line is quite thick. Could even like dimple the whole thing if I wanted to. So the whole thing's black. Yeah, burnt. Mm. 
I'm kind of thinking maybe I should do it on both sides. In case you're wondering, I'm in the woodworking all my life, basically. My father was um, a woodworker, mainly boat building. I need to help him a lot. Boat building was one of the things that, you know, it's quite, oh, it's a very skilled job, especially wood, wooden boats. Um, but yeah, it's just, you can't really escape it when you've got somebody who's, you kind of admired, because things they could create. <laughs> been a bit of a hole in there. <clears throat> Never watched it. I could say, I could. Members gonna be all black. I could actually, literally sketch it, you know, shade in this whole area. Which isn't a bad idea. But it's gonna be black anyway. So I don't know if it's worthwhile or not. I could just do it just to show you. Make it in depth there. Right. When I do the ebonizing, sometimes I have to add a bit of black paint into it as well. Um, once the, you know, just in case. Don't, oh, not every time. I don't think I would with this, to be honest. I quite, I quite like it when you get a bit of, um, do I shade it in or not? I don't know. It looks like a big eye at the moment. I might have to sh I might shade it in. They're going to be black anyway, so it doesn't need shading. I don't know what I could do. I could just go around the inside a bit more. To create a second line, which I wasn't going to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. If it doesn't, oh. <laughs> the little thing. I really ought to change that. Dee -dee -dee. So it's just taking that in around there. So we're creating that second line. Oh, got my hands starting to hurt now. <laughs> right around there, like so. So I could do it actually turning it down a little bit. Could turn it up even. So you can imagine how hot that is. It's saying it should be around what, uh, 600 degrees Celsius at the tip at the moment. Uh, it might look like it's a bit kind of smudged in the sense that um, but what that is is the tannins in the timber bleeding as it gets heated up into into the wood surrounding it. But when you sand, once you sand it, all those tannins go away, all those that staining goes away, it just leaves you with the line itself. It's a dimly line anyway, because it's, um, you know, it's kind of the effect of what it's anyway. What, because I'm stop starting. Right, so I've got that on that side. What's that sound? I think that'll, that'll be fine. Yeah, that'll be fine. And now we're going to do the same on the other side. I could double that line up if I want to. But I, I am going to do the other side. I wasn't home sent certain at first, but I decided. I made a decision. It was an executive decision. So we made a decision. So that's that line there. And then it goes to the middle there, which is obvious. So I'll grab my compass again. And make sure it touches there. Make sure it touches in the middle. There and there. Yeah, that's about right. I'll do it. So we create that line. That one, and then we've got the the laser. Me, me, stop bumping the laser. Like so. I think that's maybe not, maybe more like that. Yeah, that's better. I do. And then we're going to just draw around that, and I'll do basically the same thing again, and then we can get that ebonized. We'll turn it back, sand it first a little bit, and then we'll ebonize it. Well, that'll do. Yeah, I'll do. <coughs> la 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 la. Right, so it's just side. I said, if you were doing live, and see, if I was making a natural video, I'd cut half this stuff out.
some timbers are easier to it would um be pyrography on the others this has got a, because the piece of wood itself is, is not very good it's grains all over you can see the grain there compared to what it is there um it's a bit lumpy it's actually wood burn it's not the easiest Beech, that's alright. Yeah, with a good iron, beech is quite good, hardwood wise. It's a good wood to actually um, uh, wood burn. Then you've got basswoods and stuff like that as well. They're easy to wood burn. Yeah, you know, some burn a lot easier than others. A good practice timber is like balsa, because it burns so quickly and easy and so soft. It doesn't influence or try and um, influence, so it doesn't influence your actual, uh, you know, where you're actually trying to burn. Because it's, you know, it's got no strength in it, it's just, it gets out of the way, it burns out of the way. Whereas this, because it's oak, it's a little bit more tricky. So now it's got to do that one. Dee 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 dee. It is rather cold today. I'm not a lover of the winter. I love the spring. Yeah, it's a sign that the winter's over. Now we've got a mo little motorhome, and um, well, it's quite a big old thing, really. It had to be with the dogs, but it's um, we didn't, we didn't use it at all last year. I had to pay insurance for it, and we didn't get to use it. We didn't even get it CT. You know the MOT on it this year. It failed, and I had to you know take it back again, but I hadn't took it back yet to be done. Probably have to have the, you know, probably have to have its first CT again because I've left it too long. So, yeah, I don't see much point to it at the moment because obviously it's dreaded virus. It's not, yeah, it spoils fun for everybody, doesn't it? It's not great. We like the old motor home because we can go places and that we couldn't really go and go with the dogs. We've got the three dogs and um, oh, they love it, they do. They have a whale of a time. The problem is when you get home, you can't get them out of it. So where are we going again? And we're quite well placed here in France because quite obviously France is quite central anyway to the rest of them. Um, of Europe, yeah, main, yeah, the continent, mainland. Yep. Okay, so that's pretty much there. And that panned out a bit better that time. So that's my Death Star so far. If I need to do a bit more work on these, I can if I want. It's up to stop me afterwards, even once it's been um, uh, ebonized, you know, turned black because. The ebonized process is not actually a finish on top of the piece of wood at all. It's literally in the wood. It's a reaction between the tannins and, and it's like tannic acid in the wood with the um, uh, acid from the uh, sorry from the iron oxide from the actual mixture we're going to use. So we're going to go and grab that, shall we? It's over here somewhere. Ah, dee -dee 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 -dee. We've got twelve people here. Hello, twelve people. <laughs> yeah, I could do. Well, yeah, the motorhome is outside, getting all wet and horrible. We, should, we wanted to put it in the barn when we bought it, but then we realised it was too big. It's longer than the blooming barn. So, uh, my ebonising solution is over here. Probably could have done with actually making some more up. Got some more white vinegar over there, so I could do. Pretty dilute, and what happens is it tends to um, well, evaporates, because even though it's got vinegar, the vinegar, the acid portion of the vinegar, it's left behind because only eight. This one's eight percent. This one is six percent. Is, is okay. Six percent. And how we make our solution? Yeah, is literally wire wool. So in there is vinegar and wire wool. It's like more rusty. Look, which is literally it. Well, it has just disintegrated. Where's it all gone? It's not there. The other thing I use is iron ore. If I do a lot of grindings, whatever. I collect the grindings, which is in here. This is my grindings here. Yeah, these are iron filings basically. Yeah, and I use that as well. It works. The same, you know, same difference. Or you can just use a bit of old wire wool, brillo pad if you like. Doesn't matter. The soap doesn't make any difference. A bit more, bit more liquid in there. So <clears throat> have I got something a bit better to put in? 
maybe that. So I've got a Marge tub. It don't matter, it's got all rubbish in it. Still <laughs> sludge in the bottom of that. Hope it's fine. But it's left me with this solution, which is a bit that bit horrible. You don't want to drink it, like somebody suggested before. It's not a great idea. So I'm gonna put that in there. Now I'll keep I don't I need to keep it away from the other wood because I don't want to turn the other wood. So, so we're gonna just literally can you see that changing already? Look, no, from, from, if you're, if I, I'll just show you again. If, if I, for me first putting it on, it's brown, yeah? And they're black, already. Look that. The longer it's in there for, you know, the, the, far, you know, the more it will react, and the faster, faster it will react. See what first goes on, and that goes black. That's how much, out. <clears throat> iron oxide has got in that wood. You can see where I first put it on there, where I dunked it in, really black. So that's the plan. So I'll dunk those, those weird shaped bits in first, so they just they go in, just move them about. Now, if you've got any sawdust on it or anything like that, you've got to be careful because that'll stop the, um, the fluid getting through, believe it or not. And then uh, you'll end up with a lot of spotty bits. It happened on the previous one I did. It actually happened in a demonstration I did. I made a, I uploaded a video not, uh, a few days ago, actually, or last week, uh, about um, ebonising wood. What I'll do is I'll put that link that in the description or an end card for it of this video. Alright, so then what okay, so now that is wet. I want it to dry now, don't I? So I'm gonna put that near the wood burner. Hopefully we can get that to dry. Got to make sure you can see that one there, just down there, it's been a bit of a pain. I can't get go on, you get on there. This brush is really hard. Oh it's on there now. So you've got to make sure all those bits have um the actual Fluid on, obviously it's not going to work, is it? I think that's it, that'll do. Oh no, I've got to cut my hand in the vinegar, it's acid! Oh, they're melting, they're melting! So anyway, as you see, that is now turning. I'm going to um, use a bit of tissue or a rag or something, just remove some of that excess material, material, goo, and there's a bit of rag. Don't worry, it didn't come from the bedside cabinet, no. I'll take off the excess because I want it to dry, so I don't want it to be too wet. You still see the marks that I've done with the pyrography. If I leave that excess, so it's still going to be reacting, but if I leave the excess on there, what will happen is you'll end up with like this browny, rusty layer. But we still have that to um, an extent, which we might need to be cleaned off. Um, I might just use the airline and spray it over something I don't want to get. <laughs> there you go. Right, so that's going to carry on reacting. That'll get a little bit darker than that. As you see, that's, that's definitely black, isn't it? So that's ebonise. That's how you would ebonise a piece of wood. I think I forgot to do I was going to sand all these edges in. But, yeah, mind, I didn't. <laughs> we'll do it afterwards. Which is quite nice, it might expose a little bit of the oak. Oh, the extra effect. So I'm going to put it over here to uh, my strange kind of Daft Punk minion, maybe. I'm not sure. But anyway, it needs to dry. And while that's drying, we are going to make the stand itself. And that is literally going to be, the, well, the bit that stops it from falling over. Well, it's still got a bit of heat in there. Yeah, that's right. Smouldering away. So I'm going to put that there. Just on the top there. That could be drying on there. There's enough, enough warmth coming out of that just to help that on its way. Hopefully dry enough to uh, do the final stages and the finishing and maybe put a bit of lacquer on it. If it isn't, it won't be. <laughs> oh, what are we saying? De -de -de -de. Beetroot. Yeah, that's another way of doing it. Beetroot is quite an interesting um, dye. It's a different principle. B root's not reacting, it's literally just um, it's a dye dye. It will actually change the colour. And it gives you a nice brown colour, beetroot does. Not purple. No. Some people try coffee staining, uh, it's all sorts of different stuff stain. Does, uh, does it stain that? No. It doesn't actually stain the skin though. It's um it's a reaction. I don't think it does, or has it? I don't know, maybe. I haven't noticed before. <laughs> I've done this quite a bit, so um, 
I usually end up with black paint on my things as well, so that might be why I don't notice. So anyway, let's get this stuff out of the way, because I don't want to put any more of this stuff where it doesn't want to be. Because by accident, I could end up getting it on another project, which we don't want to happen. So I'm going to pour this back into this pot. It's got a lump on the bottom. For the next time I want to use it. Into my little box. Goes at the back there. I don't know where the funnel is, that didn't end up being there. Uh, what you ought to do really is just create a big pot of this stuff and run it through a coffee filter or something like that, get rid of all the old residue so you just end up with a, flu a clean fluid. The problem with when it's like this, because it's more of a sludge at the moment, um, you leave that sludge drying on the surface and it's just something you've got to remove, you've got to sand it away. So I'm just going to move, put this back. Mm. So here we are now, here we are now, here, well, I am now going to, can't find the top to this bowl, that's very annoying, I'll put it over there, hopefully it doesn't fall over. We've got a piece of wood there, this is the bit of pine I want to use, for the main part, bulk of the stand. Now I could do it all in hardwood, I thought I was going to do like two tough, but if that's this bit of pine, clear white pine like this, um, and then with the black, on, you know, for the actual stand portion. I thought it might look quite interesting. That's my reasoning, and I'm sticking with it. If you don't like it, you're going to lump it. Sorry! I hope people like my... anyone saw my video, um, which, I met, which I made while I was doing my live stream regarding the wood turning of the little tea light holder. Um, I was quite pleased with the little video in the end, although the, the audio was a bit of a problem because I had a weird popping sound I didn't have a pop filter on the actual microphone because when you do your peas, you're literally blowing into the microphone, which then creates a popping sound. It just sounds a bit odd. Um, I wasn't thinking straight. Anyway, new microphone tomorrow. I hope. Okay, so let's bring you back down here. So this is the piece of wood I'm going to use. Um, I haven't worked out an actual design, so we're winging it. Yeah. I hope you don't mind that I'm going to wing it. I know that I want it to support the, micro the actual tablet. It doesn't need to go all the way up, no. But also I know I need a base. And I know the base needs to be big enough to incorporate the actual uh, bracket. I don't want it too vertical because I don't want that luck happening or the tablet just falling forward. I want it to be fairly lent back, just like this one. So the bulk of it, I could actually use this one as my template for the bulk of the design. Although I think I need a bit more room here for the actual. But the saying that, the way I'm going to do it, I'm not going to have all this at the front. It's going to be nearer the front. That's my plan. Yeah. The other thing, because the actual, in this case, this tablet's okay because you can put it upside down and the cable can come out the top. It's, still, it's what I was doing earlier, it was absolutely fine. So I might not bother because I mean, what you can do if you want to have it on charge at any point and make it easier for yourself if your tablet doesn't spin all the way around or your phone doesn't spin all the way around on the rotation. Because sometimes my other device doesn't do it. If you go that way, it'll go that way. But if you go all the way around, it doesn't. It moves, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't actually treat it as though it's the wrong way up. It says it basically, anyway, I digress. The point being is, you might want to put a charge cable in the bottom, so then you can either create a hole in the bottom or a clearance for the cable to come out of. I did that on somebody's phone holder, on um, actually somebody who actually watches my channel, who orders for um, Etsy. So anyway, I'm going to create this similar to this, but not the same. I thought any of these silly little moulds, if that's a bit old fuddy duddyish, don't want fuddy duddyish. No, I made this years ago in a bit of a hurry, as you can probably tell. Right, so the base, I think, needs to be a similar size. I can always trim it down if I want to. Trim it down if you want to. Right, like so. So I think that's going to be the size of the base. The other thing is, oh, I just noticed. It's got, like, oh, it's not the same thickness. So I think before I marked that, maybe it would have been a good idea to run this through the thicknesser to get rid of all these lumps and bumps. Now, other ways you can do that. You could do it with a sander, or you could use a hand plane, and and actually um, straighten it that way. Get rid of, I think you can see that. It's 
Well, by doing that, show you that. You might see that there is a gap. That's not flat. Now, I need to make it flat. Oh, it won't be flat. It'll be wonky. I don't want it wonky. No. Same on this side. It's not flat. Now, I don't know if you know there's a technique called what um, we use winding strips. Now, I'm going to digress a little bit. We use two rollers. Rollers, rollers. Uh, if I can find another one. There's one I found earlier. And what you do is you put one here on your piece of wood and one over there on your piece of wood. You can use two pieces of wood if you like. Best way, actually. And then you literally look across them like that. And if, what happens is by doing that, you're actually exaggerating any bends in your piece of wood. They're called winding strips because it finds a wind in your piece of wood. And the wind is when the wood is doing that like a propeller. Yeah, so if you have a bit of wood like this, you do it like that. But it's quite good to actually make a couple of winding sticks. Um, that's not the right way of doing it. It's better to do bits of wood because I was, something like this just falls over. So if you had winding sticks, like just, you know, like for instance, if it was a thin piece of wood, it would just stay there. And you literally iron across two pieces of wood. And because you're increasing the width, it's easy to see if there's a wind in your piece of wood. Even if your eyesight's a little bit poor. Amazing! It's an old technique. Very, very old technique. So anyway, we're going to run that through the thicknesser. Let's do it. Oh, it's a machine. It makes noise. <laughs> it's exciting. Right, okay. So, I'll put a bit of wax on the table. That's what I do. Whenever possible, a bit of wax on the tables. Because it helps a bit of wood slide through. Right, put you there for a second. Oh, now this is a Multicool MC1 thicknesser. It's not a planer. In other words, it doesn't do the surface. It's literally a thicknesser. The idea is it'll get the piece of wood down to thickness. It has a digital gauge if I need to use it at the top here, but I don't. No, I just need to take a little bit off each side because I'm not, it's not critical, is it? No. It doesn't matter if it's, well, I don't know, 18 millimetres thick or 17.5 or something silly. That doesn't matter. It could be any thickness you like, as long as it's thick enough. A bit like me. Oh, dear. So, when I turn this machine on, what it'll do is it will trigger a response to my um, extractor. My dust extractor, my chip extractor, which happens to be in the barn next door. And what that'll do is it creates a resistance effect. I might have mentioned this before. I made this thing. I'm quite proud of it, actually, because <laughs> it works so freaking well. Anyway, in here is a circuit that I made. It was technical stuff, it was. It, it, what it does is it senses a load on the cable. So when you turn this machine on, it says, oh, there's electricity being used. There's a load. And this senses that load. When it senses the load, it operates a relay. And when that relay kicks in, it then turns on my dust extract extractor, which happens to be in the room next door. I don't want it in here. It's too noisy. Ooh. I could show you, but it's dark in there. <laughs> So we're going to turn it on. I'll tell you what, I'll show you. Yeah, why the hell not? So that is running at the moment, and it should have triggered the dust extractor with a bit of that. Oh, it's really dark in here. I could put a light on. You can probably hear it. Can you hear that machine going? Oh, there you go. Oh, my road bike. I ain't rode that either. Oh, dear. Oh, 1400. <laughs> it's a beast. So this is the dust extractor. Oh, look at them, two of them. Like two Mr. Blobbies, they are. So they turn on whenever I turn the machine on in my workshop. And it's in here because I don't want to listen to that noise. Mm -hmm. Annoying as that. Yep, there you go. It's not very tidy in here. Now, Jasper, that's my lawnmower, in case you're wondering. It's a ferrous lawnmower. I know you've got to think about your grass. <laughs> I did have a look at some of your videos, your machine. And uh, yeah, so that's my grass cutter. And that's what we cut our fields with at the moment. We really could do with something a bit different. And like I say, this is my motorbike, which now needs a new battery because it hasn't been used enough this year. Um, I'll try to get, run it up just to get the old engine turned over and what have you. The battery's naked again. They don't like it, these motorbike batteries. They really don't like them sitting. But it is a monster bike, it is. Well, it's a muscle bike. Yeah. I went to Italy on that. Twice, <laughs> a motor, ran the racetrack, and also uh, oh, one of the passes between Italy and uh, oh, the really windy one. 
between Italy and um, uh, Switzerland. That was last year, that was. No, not last year, the M4, sorry. Anyway, we left it running, you know. So let's not chop our bit of wood up. No, don't chop it up, let's plane our bit of wood. Let's make it all smooth and lovely, like a baby's bottom. Not like mine, no. So first of all, I've got to set the height. Let's do all this lever here. At the moment, it's too thin. Check the grain, make sure I'm happy with the direction of the grain. Oh, I've got to scoot and ground and take lumps out. Not doing anything that time, just pulled it through, but the cutters aren't actually touching the bit of wood yet. Wind it down a bit more. Silly me. Didn't do enough. Oh. Okay, so that's the first pass, and it's virtually done it here, but there's still a bit of a ridge. You probably can't see it because there's a light bit of wood, but there is, there's a bit of a ridge there still. But I'm not worried about it, I think that's, that's so tidy, I'm not going to worry, I've got to do the other side. I don't want to take too much off the wood. So that's going to go that way, that way. A bit more. I'll take you to my exit hole. In it goes. That end. Drop the top. And look at that fluff on there. You can see that. That actually could do the sharpening. A bit of the, um, the grain's lifting a little bit. Especially where the grain's coarse and near that knot. So that's where the actual wood is coming up to the surface. The grain is more end grain near the surface of the wood. Pine is especially bad for that. But I already had it, so that's why I used it. Should we turn that off? It's quite noisy, isn't it? I just pressed the red button. Blue pill, red pill. Right, okay. Oh, we've got 15 people here. Oh my god. Oh, you, my bottle lid, when you say it, was it on the floor? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, maybe not. It might be somewhere. Okay, well, there you didn't. <laughs> talking about the vinegar bowl. It was a book stand on Bagbus. Oh. Got to go. You take care, Peter, mate. Catch you later. I've got some weird, more bot comments coming in here. Vark e tech. I'm sure that's not real. Uh, use a coat hanger. For what? Where's the finished tea light? I could grab that in a minute. I, um, if you if you watch my video, I've, I've actually put a video on there. You can see it on there with oh, <laughs> yeah. You, you talked her up. You have it. Hey Jasper, she's brought it in. Here is my assistant, my very own Debbie McGee. <laughs> I'll get a jump run through hoops next. Yes. Yeah, look. See. Yes. Got glass. Look. I've got my safety specs on. I'm getting told off now because I've got my safety, safety specs on. I suppose I should have really. It says it's glasses. So there you go, that was it. That was a return out of a, a lump of walnut. Originally it was going to be a round, round sphere shape. And then, um, <laughs> what have I got to do with this now? <laughs> it's ended up more of an apple shape. But it's beautifully smooth. Oh, and shiny it is. Oh, my sheen's sort of like a luster. Sort of iridescence there on the walnut. I'm dribbling wax everywhere, look, so over it. <laughs> got wax on the wax. It's just all I used was um well I sealed it first and I just put candle wax on it. Not candle wax, beeswax. I've done it in a lathe. And then we used the the uh oh holes uh forced a bit in the in the bench pillar drill and created the hole and then I ran it around the top here and then a bit more sand, a bit more wax and, and it's a good one. It's a bit like a rocking horse's bum hole if you take the candle home. Yeah, let's take the hat and I'll show you what I mean. It's a rocking horse's bum hole. We, oh, oh. That rocking horse has been a bit dribbly. Yeah. It doesn't want to be bummed properly. Oh, terrible, darling. 
shotgun. That's basically it, really. It's a, it's a, it's a wooden round thing with a hole in the top to take a tea light candle like that. So yeah, we made that the other day, and then I made that a little video. So check out the video, um, Jasper. I chopped it all down and made it into more of a presented style. I don't even remember. I was actually um, I was using a, uh, another camera at the same time as doing the live. So anyway, we've got that. We've got that here, and now we're going to mark that. I started marking, didn't I? And I realised that's a silly thing to do. That I should have planed that first. So we have. We're planed it now. So I'm going to mark it, and that's basically the base length. It might be end up being a bit shorter later, but it's a good, good start. And also this bit here. I can pretty much say, oh yeah, it's going to be a similar sort of size to that. It doesn't, it's not higher than the tablet, which is good. I don't want that. And it's, you know, it's, it's, and it's going to provide enough support. So it's going to be about roughly, roughly about there. Yeah. So um, I'll use my square just for sake of using it. This is an old Rabone one. It looks Imperial. Boris Johnson were like that. Yeah, <gasps> don't do politics. Don't do politics on this channel, Marcus. No, I have to hold myself back. I do. Oh, I don't even notice, but no one's reporting about all the problems they're having down at Calais. Yes, exporters are having trouble getting stuff into the UK. I wonder why. Oh, don't do politics. No, no, no. So I've got two bits. So that's going to be the base. So I might get a beat, and that's going to be. About almost the same size, really. So first of all, I want to think to myself, how am I going to fix that to that? And I'm going to say to myself, hmm, maybe I should, it will be a little bit longer to allow for it. Because what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a little bit of a slot in there, I think, to accept that. Or maybe not. Do I need to? Maybe not. Or do I? Hmm. Or do I create a tongue that could then go into a mortise? You know, a tenon. I might do that. Do an angular angular tenon for the main part, or two or two small angular tenons, or you could do dowels if you want, or you could use a festool domino doweler. You could do that. In fact, I might just do that. Why the hell not? You haven't seen my festool work yet, have you? It's a bit of an overkill for this job, but that'll do it. Yeah, it's a bit of a beast. So first of all, I want to cut that one, which is going to have an angular cut on it. We we'll to cut afterwards. We'll cut, I thought, what, first of all, we'll just cut them to length. That's a good start, isn't it? Let's do that. And we're going to come over here to my range alarm saw, which I've talked about before because I'm particularly fond of this machine. Some people are scared of them, and I understand why, because if you don't know what you're doing with it, they can be a little bit threatening. I like chop my fingers off. Now, I've had this machine for quite a while, and basically, it's a circular saw that happens to be on a rail. Oh, look at that. This is a very old DeWalt one. And it's better than the, the newer ones. Oh, I had a, newer, a slightly newer one. I say no, but that's still dangerous. <laughs> and it wore up quite quickly. Um, this one, which is older, is better. A lot better, in fact. One, cut, to the next one. I have to say, it hasn't got to be critical. I would say it's probably about six inches, maybe six and a half inches long. To the base. No, is it the back or the base? I can't tell now. That's the base. If I was selling these and I wanted the back them, well then obviously I'd make sure they're all the same length. But I'm not. So we now have two pieces of wood, one is slightly longer than the other. So that is the base one, because that's the longest one. And I've got one here I want to um, put an angle on it. There's various ways of doing it. What I'm going to do though, I'm literally going to hold it into the uh, like so and create a bit of an angle on it. I can wink how far I want to go back there. And then cut it, holding it and pushing it to the back of the fence. Go over here to see. The boom that this saw is, it's, we use a chopped saw because it lifts too much at the back. This 
some reason it doesn't seem to do that. So I've got to hold it at the back there. What I can do if I'm worried, I'm not saying you should do it like this, just so you know. That's how I do it. I'm using the back fence as my, effectively as my uh, back jaw of a vice. So I created an angular cut. Now what I do is this machine for that because well, that's straight. It creates a lovely straight cut. So now that is going to be the back support, the rest for the stand. And I have to ask myself, do I think let's turn this off a second? Is that enough? Because I'm winging it. I'm not, you know, it's not rocket science at the moment. I'm just winging it. So I shouldn't really be in front of the blade until it stops turning. So I've got that stand here. I have to ask myself, is that angle enough? Can you see as well? If that's on there tight, is that too vertical? I think that's too vertical. So I might cut that again at more of an angle. So we're going to do it again. I'm not satisfied at that. Or at a slightly steeper angle. Because where it's going to be positioned as well on my bench, I'll be looking down at it a little bit. Hey, you could do that with a hand saw if you want. You could use a um, uh, a 90 degree block if you want. You know, to do a 90 degree, degree cuts. Use a chop saw if you like, but don't do it like oh, I just did. That's the way I held it like that. I wouldn't recommend that. So now as you can see, there. So we've got to have a butt joint here. That's going to be a butt joint, but we have two options. I could actually put that joint in and set that in, which I'm not going to do. I'm going to actually use my domino dowler, which creates like a loose tenon. So we have a loose tenon there, and a loose tenon going to there, and there's two ways of doing this. We could, I could literally screw that to that, and position this in the vise, and if you go, do it by hand and go straight through, or I could mark it and do it as two separate pieces, and then stick the two bits together. Yeah, it doesn't matter, because the bottom, if I have three tenons, it doesn't matter, you can see them like it's underneath. No one's going to be looking underneath. Unless you're really desperate. I'm not going to look underneath, no. The other thing is, I think, how are we going to stop this tablet from sliding out of the bottom like that? So, there's two ways of doing it. One is we do something simple and just put a piece of wood along there. So it creates a little bit of a, a lip. The other way we can do it, we can actually create a slot in there. Now, I normally do a slot. But I've got to check whether or not the bit I've got is big enough to accept this without this constantly trying to slide out of it. Because the slot I normally create is relatively, well, shallow. And I normally use a little router setup I've got over here, clamped in there, and I'm doing my phone, phone holders. And this is what creates the slot in a piece of wood. It's a router and it's a little trend router. Um, and it's literally just set up to do one particular task. I've got it, I'm sort of, I altered it a little bit the other day because I had to do something different with it. But normally that, it's a wrong bit of wood, it's a little bit of wood, it is. Normally that, I'd literally just run the piece of wood through like so. But this is obviously a lot bigger than my phone holders because it's obviously a tablet holder. So I've got a choice, so I literally, what I normally do, I, well, what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to remove this back fence, reposition this fence to where I want it to be. <coughs> bit of a tickle. Have I got a battery drill around it? I have. So we'll reposition the fence and hopefully, touch wood, it will be deep enough or big enough for the tablet to sit in. Take it right away the there. Oh, that's annoying. Didn't know for that, did I? No. <laughs> I didn't think of that one, friend. I don't want an angle, but as long as you keep pulsing it, you can usually make it work. Okay, that's removed. And now I want to create a slot. 
in this piece of wood. Now I'm looking at that edge now because the uh, tension in the grain it is actually glued together the right way round. The grain is going that way. If you can see it, it's going that way. And that one's going the opposite direction, which is correct if you're gluing two boards together. Otherwise, if you have more going inside, if that was glued on that edge to that edge, so that board slipped around basically, what would happen is this whole thing would cup as it dries and expands. We don't want that, no. It's quite sweet there, Carolyn, she's uh, watching my videos. <laughs> Get not in the chat for me. <laughs> She's a kind soul. Right, so just just move the fence over a little bit. I don't want to... Now this is where you've got to be careful here. When you've got things that can influence you travelling across your cutter, the problem with that is you can end up coming away from the fence. If this comes away from the fence in that way at all, what happens is you'll end up with a groove going in the wrong direction. You don't want it there. Oh, so I've got to be very careful as I pass this through that I'm pushing towards this fence this way and don't try and go too quick. You could even say self, so, um, reduce the height of the cutter and then it won't be quite so much of a problem. Um, the other thing you've got to watch out is tear out of this end. That could still happen. But it's easy sort of, because what you do is you just, if you have a bit of tear out with a bit of wood chips out, you can easily just take that piece back where the chip bit is. Because it's not critical on its width. Anyway, let's do that. First of all, I need some wax. You know what I like with my wax? Oh, who waxes their legs? I have had my back done before. Oh my God. I don't recommend it. Don't do it. No. Are you women, you know, wax your legs, get mad. Sadomasistics and all that. Even though I pronounced it wrong. Ugh, they... Anyway, I had my back done. Caroline was there. And she's watched because she thought it was funny. She's like that. I suppose I did marry her. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, oh, crikey, they, they put these little squares wax strips on my back, rip them off one by one, and then there's bits, they put all cream on your back first, and then there's bits that they didn't, they didn't manage to do properly, so they go over it again with the same, with the wax strips again, and wherever they went on the second time, because they didn't re-moisturise or put this cream on your back again, I had all these like squares, <laughs> like a patch of quilt all over my back, literally took my skin off, I had like, literally red raw, oh god that hurt, anyway, I don't recommend it now. I don't recommend an epilady lady either. One of them funny things that spin around and rips the hairs out. But after spending the money having my back done, Cal and started using that for a bit on my back. And um, I don't know, what, why the was it in my back anyway? I don't, I don't remember why. When I used to go to the gym, the days when I was a little bit less fat and a little bit more, how to put it, more muscular, um, I used to go to the gym regularly and what have you. And there was a guy who used to go into the spa. I'm not aware of a lie. He's a, um, I think it's probably, he's it's, it's Asian. I say Chinese, but he, he might have been, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> he kept twiddling. He had a mole on his face. He had long his hair, and he's constantly twiddling his hair um, on his mole. And while I was sitting there, we're watching chat. He's another guy, you know, chatting away. And another guy got in, and not a word of a lie, his back and his shoulders was like a rug, a thick, hairy rug. And I got paranoid at that point. I thought, Craig, I don't end up like that. No. <laughs> I don't do it. No, I think I need a little bit let, more room there. So I'll do that. That's it. Yeah, so I got, I got a bit scared. So I, I... <laughs> and also, they, were, um, they also did sort of health things at this gym. That was a, at the time, was it? Oh, it was Green's gym. That was Green's. And it was on Barrack Street in Norwich. It's called something else now. Squares or Weirds or something like George's, I don't know. It's one of them chain gyms, a chain of gyms, and that one of them. It's very good actually, used to do spinners every day. I was a good boy then. Oh, I need to plug this in. Oh, look, that'll help. <laughs> so plug that in, and then maybe it'll work. So anyway, we've got to put the groove in, and that groove is what's going to stop the bottom of the tablet falling out. <laughs>
see how it's actually clogged up as it's trying to cut through. Okay, and it's created all this little fluffiness, but we'll get rid of all that. That will be gone. So don't worry about that. So now we have a, you know, a half round slot. Now when I do it with the oak, I don't get all this. No, not at all. But with pine, it's like our northern fir. It's a lot softer. Luckily, nothing broke out on the ends. So that's very useful. And hopefully that's enough. To, yes, it is. That'd be perfect. Well, so that's on the back here as well. What's the angle like? The angle of the dangle. Yep, yeah, that's in. I'm happy with that. That's good. So, oh, you can't see. There you go. So we've got that bit with it behind at the moment. Just check that the angle's okay. Remember, this is also in its case, which I will keep it in its case. Well, let's go back to the bench. We're going back to, oh, actually, while I'm here, let's see how well this um, Death Star is drying. In fact, it is dry. Good sign, because it's got a little purpley tinge to it. A bluey sort of tinge. But that's just the stuff that's left on the surface. What's well, light, a very light sanding. So a little bit of relief, and I'll um, clean off the corners and stuff. Yeah, with my Death Star. I might even do a bit more wood burning on it as well to make it a bit more, um, yeah, Death Starish. <laughs> it's only a phone holder, so it's not that critical, no. Oh, dear. All right, anyway, so what's been saying. I'm getting a lot of bot comments. Right, a slot, that is a right slot. It's a uh, half round bit. Oh, no, cove bit, sorry, it's a cove bit. It's fairly sharp, and it? it really could do a sh um, sharpening. Yeah, that will make it easy to read the comments. That's why, that's why I start using the tab. That um, it's still not that easy reading the comments. I'll tell you, everything's so small. And it, I need to find a way of enlarging the text. Really, yeah, I'll be able to see you. So you probably read. You probably read it already. <laughs> oh, you, you, you did, didn't you? I commented. I replied to your comment. Yeah, thanks for watching that. So I'll build this channel up again now. So, bit by bit. So obviously it's gone a bit um, dormant at the moment. So uh, we need to, you know, I need to do a lot more work and get the channel up and run again. And I've done live on there before. This, this is new to the channel. I, you need a projector. What sort of projector? You mean, what do you mean for doing like demonstrations and stuff? I've got more driveway board over there. I do have a, a projector in the, um, in the lounge, it's what we use for our t uh, t main television in the lounge, it's a bit of a projector on the big screen. Because I like my movies, I like my films, I like having good sound, I'm a bit paranoid with good sound, and you know, that's why I keep mentioning it, is the sound okay? Is the sound okay? <laughs> because I don't want it to sound like shit, no. Because it, one thing is embarrassing, because you, sh you know, I should know better, and the other thing is, I, I wouldn't enjoy it myself, if I don't like it. Why would I expect other people to? Now I've got this little, there's one, oh, that's got a little video on this, that's a bit of a review video. Um, I was going to buy a aluminium version of this, a pop machine job here, but it's very expensive for what it is. Anyway, I went into the Brico, which is a DIY in France, and I've got a little wolf one like that. And it's like a little marking gauge, got all these little holes and stuff in it. So I might do a little review video, it's only a fiver. It's not cheap as chips, you know? Um, I was quite impressed with it. Looking at it, it looks like it's just doing, you know, it's got to do the same job. I know it's plastic, it's anything, um, so it's going to be vulnerable, but if it's only a fiver, if it does, yeah, you know, it lasts a little while. You, know, you look after it, it should last a long while, shouldn't it? You know? Anyway, we're going to sand that. I'm going to uh, plug that in there. Oh, 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 oh okay. Saucy. Anyway, that's an air sander, an air DA sander. It's a bit like the Bosch PEX type sander. Basically, what happens with this, it don't just spin around, it, it's, it shakes as well at the same time. That's what we call a dual action. So let's bring it out here, let's sand that down. <laughs>
Oops. And the slot. Probably a good idea to actually take a bit of that paper off there and wrap it around something a bit more sensible than trying to do it like that. I had a blade there a minute ago. What have I done with that? Oh, there it is. Bit of emery. Stop leaking. It's leaking for some reason. Oh, well, never mind. So I need to find something I can wrap this around sensibly so I can then uh, sand the slot. Have I got anything around? Oh, that I have. That'll probably do it. Will that do it? I think that will. There you go. Right, before I go mad with this bit regarding the finishing, I want to make sure by jointing of the actual uh, two bits of wood together like so is spot on. So that's basically going to be mounted probably about there, but I want to use my domino dowler to actually join them together. So should we get that? I'll tell you what, like that, because annoyingly. So I'm going to create the joint first before I go too far with it. And the machine I'm talking about is this one over here. It's special. And expensive. It's a Festool, so it would be. Everything from Festool is expensive. Some things are overpriced. I would say this is probably overpriced, but it's still worth it. That really is it's one machine that I use a lot. Oh, look at that. It's a beast. Oh, what is it? Oh, don't, I don't know. What is it? I don't know what it is. Do you know what it is? Oh, anyone know what that is? I'll give you a clue. It's not a biscuit joiner. No. A special thing. It is special. And what it does, it creates funny shaped holes. Huh? So there's a special kind of plug system. You have to plug the plug in, plug the lead in, like so. And you tune it round like so. So now it's plugged. And then I can plug it into the mains. So we won't do that just yet. Just so make sure there's no horrible kinks in the cable. Otherwise, you'll create well potential breaks in the wires inside your cables. Not a good idea. Okay, what this actually does, it creates a slot in a piece of wood for which you can uh, marry up or match to the opposing piece of wood that you want to join to. Now, if you think you're like a doweler, just press like a drill hole. It's a hole. And then you put your dowel in, which is like a little bit of round bit of wood. And then you push it to wood again and it joins it. This is kind of a similar concept. But except it doesn't use dowels, no. It uses special things they call them dominoes. Ooh. And there's no little white dots on them either. No. Well, I'll just use two little dominoes for this project. Uh, I've got a couple in my little box here. I'll be back with you in a second. I'm a coming. Do, 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 do. Make sure the right size. Yep, that's good. That's good. Yep. I'll just, I've got a little gauge over here that I used to put the domino in because I make my own dominoes. You can buy them, but they're ridiculously expensive for this machine. For little wooden bits of wood like that. Not worth it. I haven't bought one official domino for this machine yet. Always made them. So basically, what you see there is a piece of wood, and if you see the shape of that, yeah, so that's the shape of the slot, and it has a flat bottom. So it creates that with a round bit. Ooh! Now, it doesn't do it by um, like a router, where you're moving a uh, perpendicular to the piece of wood. Um, so you can't, it's literally just sort of doing that in the hole, going across the hole. No, it's doing this. It's rocking. So I can probably, actually, I'll tell you what, plug it in, I can show you. And then we'll mark it out and then it's um, ready to do the next stage. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab my power pack before I forget and um, make sure that the phone, which I'm using for streaming at the moment, and it's a OnePlus 6 phone this one, sorry, and it's a very good phone actually. 
very good indeed. I'm very pleased with it. It's quite powerful. All right, and now I've got that plugged in, so hopefully that'll, uh, yeah, not run out of power. So this is my Domino Dan. It's a very clever machine. Um, definitely, definitely worth the money, um, although it is expensive. So I'm just going to show you something, give you an idea how it works. So this carriage arrangement here basically goes in and out, slides inside, in and out of the main machine, and it's on the sp spring loaded mechanism. Probably a good idea for me to give that a bit of a clean anyway, not with that because it's got acid on it. After cleaning the uh, acid off the, uh, you know, the solution off the bit of wood, off the uh, uh, Death Star, that's it, the Death Star. So I'm just going to make sure that's cl these are clean. Otherwise, what happens is they get gummed up and then it don't, don't work very well because it has to slide smoothly. Now, if you have a look at this, this bit here, it don't just creates a hole. I need to sharpen actually. A bit of a pain to sharpen, but I, I have found a way of doing it. There's two bronze bushes that those go into. Um, and what this does, it doesn't just spin. That cut doesn't just spin, it goes sideways. If you look. Oh, wobbly that. Now, if you look at the bit where it's all shiny here, it's not shiny because. It does any cutting here because it doesn't. It's shiny because the actual material it's removing is travelling over it and through these flutes. Because the cut is only cutting on this on these two bits on you know on the obviously on the surface, on the pointy end, but also on these what I call the wings of the car. So these this area here does not cut at all because the angle it's not doesn't make contact with the wood. But it does work really well. It's a great bit great machine. Uh, they're 1200 blooming euros, so it should be. But I've had it a long while and it's earned it as money again, again, again. So, would I buy another one? Yes. If I can afford to, that is. <laughs> Money's not as great as it used to be. There you go. Send me. Send me. So, okay. So, what you have is you have a fence arrangement that can literally go, well, goes down like so. Depending on what, you, what angle you're doing, it goes at any angle. But also, it will move up and down and there's a sort of stopped arrangement here which um is like a depth gauge so you can set your depth so you bring it up you move it across so that's 40 mil 30 uh, 25 and you can do obviously you yeah, know variations of it but that's just a quick set generally you just stick with them absolutely fine and normally you have your dust extraction coming off the side here but we're not today because i'm only doing two you know a few cuts and I'm not going to worry, I'll just clean it out with the airline for this job. Normally I do. If I'm doing a lot of it, you have to. It'll just clog up in no time. So, what we need to do is join these two pieces of wood together with this. So, I'm going to use these two dowels. One's going to go in there like so. And the other one, and that will then go into that piece of wood there. And then we'll do a bit of glue in that. A couple of screws from behind to hold it while it's going off. Um, and obviously so I can finish the project. So, first of all, I can say to myself, well, I need to work out where they're going to come. But the boot about this machine, it has these funny little nodules here. These little things. Well, you can put them in or out. So, you can, that's the centre, where the cut comes through, that'll be the centre of your slot. And you can use this as your gauge. So, as you're cutting your piece of wood, you put across there like so, and it'll be in line with that there. Or you move it across and you can do long there like so. So that, that'll be the centre there. So either that'll be where your, your dowel is mounted, like so, on both sides, or in this case, if I press this button here and bring it out again, it'll be there, which will be about here. Which I think that's fine there. You're not too far in because the back outside, you know, one of these in there would actually be enough, to be honest. And to be fair, that. Is a bit, I'm being a bit of it over the top, to be honest. Do I just put one in, or do I put two in? All these decisions, I'll put two in. So I said I was going to put two in, I'm going to put two in. That was a bit of glue on that one, scare that glue. Not going to help matters, is it? So I don't really need to mark it. I can just use these pins. And then I can put this fence down, and decide whereabouts I want the actual cut to be. 
So let's undo that one here, do that up there. I want it in the middle, don't I? So that's pretty much all the way up. Get that in the middle there. So then we tighten that up. That's that 10 mil. So this bit, it's 20 mil thick. 10 mil, put me in the centre. Just about there. So all I need to do, I don't need a marker. I'm literally going to use these pins. And we'll put one slot in, in one direction, one slot in the other direction. The other thing you've got to think about is how deep does it need to go? I don't want to be going ridiculously deep. Because I've got to 70 mil deep. We don't need to do that. No. Plus these aren't 70 mil long anyway, these ones. They only need to go in a little way. At the moment we've got a set of 35. And I can sit there, but what are they, 40 mil? 45 mil, just under. They are. So 35 give me 10 mil into the base. I'll go 50 mil into the base. So I'm going to set this at 30 mil on the side here. And that'll be the depth of the hole it creates. So I won't go any deeper than that. So it goes up to that, that, that will stop it from going any deeper. <clears throat> so let's do it. I haven't used this for ages. So not that one, into this one here. And I'm going to use that as my, this face is my registry. So I think that'd be the better face to use. I don't need to mark it. Like I said, it's clever. Only thing I will say is, if I do it here like so, it is, that could be influenced by the bench. Let's just double check it doesn't touch the bench at all. Nope, it doesn't. That's good. So, okay, I'm going to use this registry mark on this side. Like so. And then we're going to push that in. Bring it a bit closer so you can see. Oh, so we're going to create a slot. So you can see what happens when you don't use a dust extractor. I might have to redo this, put a hole in there, look. I messed up. I don't know why. Did that work down? Oh, I know why. Yeah. I do know why. Let's put that on there. And then that on there. <clears throat> we'll see. Oh, I might have to redo that. It doesn't need to be that long. Hmm. No, I might just shorten it. Anyway, um, so uh, let's try it this time. Show my mistake. You see, it didn't do it that time. Now the reason for that is the thickness of this is too narrow, and basically this was then interfering, was being influenced by the bench because the wood's not thick enough. But that second one, you see the position of that when you compare it to that one. Yeah, that's correct. That isn't. So what I'm going to do is I've got a choice. I'll just recut that, which I ain't got a bit that ain't long enough, so I can't do that. So I'm going to just shorten that. And then recut that slot. We all make errors. Very. I'll be back in a sec. I'm just going to recut this just so it isn't broken at that point. Silly mistake. So I've literally cut quite a bit off there, hopefully it's still long enough 
to hold the tablet, let's go grab a tablet and make sure it is. I don't see what it shouldn't be. Portions aren't quite as good now, I have to admit. Oh no, that's alright, that's fine. No, that's fine. In fact, it's better because it doesn't expose the... Uh, ex those, the... Um... Yeah, no, that's better. That's fine anyway. So, basically, I'll just... Um, got to recut that now. Oh, I don't know. So, probably you think live because it's made a mistake. You can't hide, can you? You can't hide from your mistakes. <laughs> That's better. Still got a bit of alignment problem there, but the, it actually does go all the way in. Now, obviously, doing it for customers, I won't, you know, I wouldn't be doing that. And also, got, or, I've also got it set on wide, so it should have been set on narrow. But I've probably got a wide um, 10 I can use for that. Let me just have a check. Oh my giddy aunt. That's because I haven't used a machine for a while. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that's wider. Well, they're bigger. That's a bigger one. There's two width, you see, that machine. You get the wide tenons, and you get your now. We've got 25mm and 22, I think it is. That's 22. That's a wide one. Oh, come back. A wider. That's definitely tighter. Yeah, that one. Little on the loose side, that's fine. So you see that? These two tenons. So now I need to line those up with that. Now I can't use, I don't, well can I use? Of course I can. Now I don't need to go very deep this time. Not very deep at all. Literally, 15mm probably. Can I do 50mm? Of course I can. So there. And now I'm going to use the other guard. guard um, I've got to set it at an angle. I've got to need to set that the same angle as the actual machine, yeah, you know, the same angle as the angle of the uh, piece of wood at the back, you know, the angle of the, of the dangle. That's the one, that's what I'm looking for. But first of all, we need to work out where we're going to put this in relationship to the tablet. As long as I'm winging this, not any real signs behind it. I don't want it to be too close to the edge because it will actually bind on the bottom. I want a little bit of free space here. I want to have a bit of a gap there, like so. I might even trim a bit more off there. Anyway, but I have a bit of a gap there, like so. So that's going to be the leading edge. Put my foot on the edge there. Grab the square. Dee, 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 dee. So that's the leading edge. Now, what you've got to remember is this is cut an angle, um, cut. In line with that, but this isn't. So those dowel holes, these ones that goes into the base, need to reflect that angle because they're straight or in line either side of this, and that won't be. So I need to work out whereabouts they're going to be in relationship to the centre of here. If I was that, if it was that critical, it's not that critical, so I shouldn't really be that worried. But this is a purpose, you know, for the purpose of this video. I've put a little mark sort of in the centre there. I can line that line up there on here, and then I'll know where that centre mark of the actual dowels have got to be. So now I'll use my square. So my dowels need to be in line with that there. Now I should be able to use the actual um, marks on the, you know, the uh, registry little bits that stick out, little pins, registry pins. But just in case I can't, I'm just going to mark here and there, and that's the centre line of each of the dowels. 
So that would be the middle of that dial, and that's going to be the middle of that dial. And I'm only going 15 mil, so it's not a lot. Not a lot. But more than enough to hold what it's got to do, or do hold what it's got to hold. So I need to set the angle. And I could do that using a bevel if I wanted to. But it's a bit tricky with this because where this is going to be, this is not how to put it. You see this angle here, it's going to be flat on there, but I'm going to be using an angle, but that's flat there. So that doesn't work, does it? Because I actually want to go like so. So what I'm going to have to do is wing it. Yeah. I've got to be careful. What I want to make sure is that that angle is correct. Be that way around, actually, but yeah, from there to there. So I've got two registry points, and that's from wherever it's going to be here to there. Because I can't actually, with this machine, unless I make a jig up, and I'm not going to do it just for one, one thing, just too much work. And we'll put it on there, like so. And I'm thinking about where that centre line is, which is there. I know think where that line is here, and that's it. <laughs> the annoying thing is, it's actually that's it. That's it. Okay, so I need to tighten that up. It's on the other side of the machine. So you see, that's it's a bit odd having to do it like that. It really is. It's not ideal by no mean means at all. Yeah, but that's what I've got to do. Now, what I can actually do make life a little bit easier for myself. To give myself somewhere to you know to go by, if I put a line on there, on the back of there, and then use this, it's going to be the upstand on here like so, right? And then clamp that to that, put a clamp on it, and then that goes that becomes my stop. So I know where that's got to come on here. It sounds it's a little bit of a faff, isn't it? Because it's not the ideal <coughs> way of doing it. But it'll, it'll work, it'll work. I hope so, because I'm doing this live. It'd be embarrassing if it doesn't. <laughs> He's like, who's this idiot? Right, what I'm going to use, what clamp? This is probably the best one. Oh, silly me. So I've created a fence, basically, using the, the piece of wood which is set at the right angle. Hopefully this handle doesn't interfere with the back of the machine. I don't think it will. No. Do the registries line up? No, they don't. So that makes it a bit awkward, because I can't actually physically see... That's it. I can't physically see where it's going in. I'm, I think I'm quite confident it's going to go in far enough there. It's also going to need more distance as well. It's going to have to travel in further. Um, 10 mil is not going to be enough because there's a gap. Uh, I mean, 10 mil, 50 mil. It's going to have to be tw uh, 20 mil. It might even have to be more than that. But I've moved the backstop to 20 mil. I also need to think about how am I going to make sure I'm in the right place. So how I'm going to do that. If you look at the back here, you've got registries on the back here. There's marks. And that mark here reflects with the edge there. So I'll just make it a bit darker. You won't be able to see it from your direction because I'm going to see it from where I am. I might just get a marker pen. Make sure it stands out. If I can find one of these. Yep, there we go. So I'm going to use the marker pen and just mark the back here. Like so. And then looks like there's a line here. Do the same on that one. Because that corresponds with that pin, the inside edge of that pin. Now, if you're trying to repeat this process, obviously it makes a lot of sense to actually create jigs up for it. So everything is a lot easier. Because it's not designed for the, how we're using it. Not at all, in fact. So I'll make sure that is on the edge there. And before I go too deep, I'm going to just double check, make sure it's in the right place. I'm happy with that. 
that looks good enough. It might be a bit further away than I first anticipated, I think, to the centre. No, maybe not, that's about right. It's a little bit further, but not a lot. That'll do. That's fine. Let's just line it up again. Bit of a faff. Good. hasn't gone all the way through <laughs> and now we're going to do the same on this one here so that's literally going to that those two joints there are going to be lined up together and then we're going to use cascomite which is a powder red wood glue and if there's any gaps in the actual joint there will be because i've actually created the slot a little bit on the wide side but it'll go off rock solid i'll show you what i mean by that in a minute oh, i've got a sample there so now we're going to chop the next one in So we're done with that now, the Festool. So that is the Festool Domino Dowler. Now, if you got yourself all sorted out and set up with it properly, these to say it'd be really, really quick. But I've kind of made it look like a dog's dinner. <laughs> As you do. So we've got two holes here. This one here, I'm gonna cut a little bit more of that, remove a little bit more of that. Oh, or should I worry? I don't know if I should worry or not. Because when I, that mistake, original mistake, how do we hide that up? And obviously before we put it together, we need to do a bit of um, sanding. I don't want any fancy stuff going on on the back of this. Um, obviously we want to make this all sand extra. All the uh, corners are rounded off with the uh, little router. And um, then we'll glue that together. But also we then got to think about the actual support in the back here which is going to be our Do -do 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 Death Star. And here's a Death Star we cut earlier. So that little Death Star is literally going to be mounted there like so. So that's going to be black and that's just going to be the light pine. So that'll work. Right. So we're going to need to sand it up. Also, before we do that, I'm going to glue it together. Not before we do that. Before we sand it, then we're going to glue it together. Um, and then but we've got to make sure all these corners are rounded off as well. So let's get the sander. So this one. Anyway, let's see what he's saying. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Yeah, the lamello, it, uh, you talk, if you talk about lamello, that's as a dual dowler. Um, well, they also make a, a fis, uh, biscuit join as well, don't they? Which I do have a biscuit join, which happens to be over there on the wall, that yellow thing on the wall next to the um, cabinet there. And that's a uh, DeWalt one, DeWalt biscuit joiner. But you've got the dual dowler, which creates two dowels at 32 millimetres apart. That's a good machine, but the, the domino is way better, way better. And those blooming um, lamellos are really expensive. If you're talking about the actual brand, like the uh ah, oh, you're talking about the actual you are talking biscuit joints, aren't you? Um the original Lamellas, the Italian I can't remember the name of it, no, the Metal Italian brand. It's very good. A bit as far as biscuit joints are concerned. Oh no, don't no, don't don't fall asleep at your desk, Duke. Don't do it. You better have a snooze. It's what I did earlier. <laughs> Reminds me of um, Blue Peter, if anyone remembers. Do they still that? Is there still Blue Peter? Is that still on? Probably they up two hours already, but I'm, I'm going to get this finished. A jigsaw. Well, I've used, I've used a scroll saw, if you haven't seen it already. It was this. Scroll saw that out. Craig, yeah, I'm, I'm not a pocket, mat, pocket screw man, mate. I don't like them. It's... It's not a joint, you're relying on a little very thin screw holding two bits of wood together. I don't like that at all. I'm going to glue this anyway. But first of all, we're going to sand it. Um, I know a lot of people swear by a pocket, pocket hole. But if you want to know, it's basically a little jig 
that allows you to dr um, to screw hole, yeah, you know, to drill and screw two bits of wood to hide the screws in like what you call a little pocket. But you can sort of, the holes are still there. It's more of a, a hot, sort of a, a method for hiding screws. <laughs> You do want to give it, have a go at pocket screws, but um, you can make your own jig anyway quite easily. Maybe I'll do that on, on this uh, channel one day, make the jig. So that, or you buy yourself a Craig, and they're expensive. For what they are, anyway. So what Craig does do though, they make some very good um, rotor tables and very good um, fences and stuff like that, really excellent stuff. It's not Craig per se I have a problem with, it's just the, the method. round that off. Could do. Then keep that on square and round that one off as well. I might do that. Should we do that? Let's do that in a minute. Let's sand it off first. Side. It's got 180 um, carbon on the paper. Carbon? Yeah, carbon. Same carbon paper. I'm going to round them off. So what we're going to use? We could use a compass, or might just use that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, like I say, go with the flow. Or is that rounded enough? I think it is. Yeah, go, we'll go with that one. So anything but pine, it, you can draw on because it's um the grain is hard. Yeah, the resin is hard, and the actual wood is soft in between the resin. Yeah, between the grain. Kind of influences where you're gonna cut. I'm gonna do the same on this one. This is on the backrest. There are things you could do to make it more Star Warsy, but you know, I'll just take the corns off now. We've got the Death Star anyway, haven't we? So I'll take that. I'll do, uh, cut it on the fret saw, maybe. I don't need to cut than the band saw. That's quite a sharp bend as well. Where's my stool? Oh, it's over here. Yeah, I've been, <clears throat> all my life I've kind of been in and out of doing different, slightly different trades. You know, I did plumbing for a while, I've done, you know, trans brick layer and done all sorts of stuff over the years. So I always come back to woodworking, always. I just love it. There's something about working with wood. It's a great therapy, if you, um, Get a bit depressed or you know, your head's a bit messed up for whatever reason. Go and play with a bit of wood. Woodworking therapy.
You could cut this on a bandsaw, even a jigsaw, a scroll saw blade in. Um, but because I've got a scroll saw, I'm just using that. I could use the bandsaw a bit, a bit quicker, but the problem is, you're not, it's quite a sharp bend that is. One thing I've made quite a bit of in the past is what we call band saw boxes. So basically, using a band saw and creating a box for the band saw. But I need to make, put a new blade in that machine before I do that. There you go. <clears throat> so I've now got the two rounds. It just looks a bit more finished there, doesn't it, like that? I think it's a bit, not, a bit nicer. Just bring it back over here. I'm dragging the battery pack around with me as well at the same time. Ooh. Oh, I've used. Oh, we could use Lynch next for those corners. I'm just going to use the uh, DA though. Uh, I don't, don't need it on there because the tablet, it's only for the tablet. So there's no, it doesn't need any holes because it's already got all these kind of gaps in the back here. And like I say, it's only for me, only for me to use for my desk upstairs in the studio. So that's literally going to be mounted on, on there like so. And that's going to be on there like so. So it'll be like that. And then obviously it'll be the death style behind it. Now, because I made that arrow, we've got a little bit of flaking on that corner, there, on the edge there. I have to ask myself, is it worth making that shorter? Or do I, as a glue oozes out of there, do I just keep it flush? I think I'm just going to keep it flush because it's only for me. So I'm not going to be too worried. No, I'm not going to worry. Let's be fine. But first of all, let's sand that crown here. Sand the little crowns so smooth. Done. thinking of getting a sander like this you do need a lot of air so you need quite a big compressor <laughs> at least nine cfm if not more
Right, so oh, a bit of sand on in here. I'm going to get the uh, router and we're going to just create a very gentle round around these edges. I don't want splinters, no. Using that little router. This one. Now, I always create these boom arms. If it's sitting above my head, that's my boom arm. And the idea behind that is it alleviates some of the uh, cables on the floor. So I actually just drag this around to wherever it be with the, with the airline or a power cable, as you can see. My little router is plugged into that at the moment. And it, it just works. I've got another one over there. Look there. That supplies the power over there and then I've got my hoovers also on the boom as well yeah the vacuum it's on the boom so it's a simple idea but it does work it just it's a little bit less mess yeah less stuff to trip over so anyway let's just router these up now the only thing is what's going to happen here is if I route all the way around which I probably will anyway you're going to have a bit of a lip here so you have a choice you either make it a bit short which I don't want to or we don't actually route at that part. So what I'm going to do is I am going to actually mark it here so I know how far to go and I'll do the same on the other side, just about. Just winged it, done my eye. When I bring the router around I'll stop at that point, somewhere near that point. It's just a little half round bit in there. So it's softened up the edges, so it's a bit more tactile instead of it being sort of like rough. rough. So, next stage is going to be to obviously fix that into there. But before we do, just a little bit of final sanding, because obviously where the router's been around the machine, especially on the soft wood like this, you end up with a little bit of fluff. A bit like that corner's a bit fluffy. A bit fluffy. <laughs>
I think that's all right, that'll do. Quite soft in there as well. So, like I say, I've got that bit of uh, damage there. That's my own stupid fault. I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. So now we're going to... That's better. Okay, let's mix a bit of glue up. I'm going to be using cascamite. Now, cascamite powdered resin wood glue and is a urea formaldehyde glue. And uh, it's good stuff. It, yeah, it's, it's, this is what is left. Which I know to dry in the pot. If I show you, it's um, it's quite brittle. Now for some glue, so for some purposes, you wouldn't want to use this glue. But I use it quite a lot for a lot of different jobs. But jointing is brilliant for because it's brittle. Like that, because it's hard. So then, you know, it's it's not a very forgiving glue at all but because it's like that any gaps you have in your joints they'll be made up with a glue so effectively it'll be rigid and hard it won't be like pva because pva when it goes dry or joint dries it's soft and squidgy it's still a bit rubbery but this isn't it goes off like rock it's not flexible at all so that's what we're going to use for the glue and then we've got these two dowels we're going to have to put in i need to trim to them first <laughs> But the sensible place to put them in first is actually in, so we'll glue them into the actual end of the, of the, of the top first. And as you can probably see, they're sticking out, sticking out too far. So there's only about 15 mil in there. And that's sticking out further than 15 mil. And they're more like location type things anyway. So that's going to be going into there like so, but we're going to have to, oh, I don't know, not much. Of, that one's actually okay. That one over there needs trimming. That one's, that one's definitely too long. That one. Is actually okay. So if I trim that one to that length, as you can see, it's, this one's slightly longer. That would be the right size. I'll quickly just do that. I'm just going to do that on the band saw quickly. It takes a few seconds. So if we get a bit of uh, powdered resin wood glue, which I've got over here, there it is. That's my powdered resin wood glue. And because it's so brittle, I'll probably use the same thing again. Same pot again. I don't need, I don't need a fresh pot, even though I've got loads of them. So it's not really worrying. So I'll just put a bit of powder in there. Now I do this, you know, if anyone knows about powdered resin wood glue, such as this one, I actually use it the wrong way around. As far as the mixing constructions are concerned, I'll do it the opposite way to what they tell you. I have my reasons, but it works for me for a start. And I get less issues with cloth, with um, separation. A bit like when you, if you mix flour water, you put too much water in at once, you end up with a, well, a nasty kind of, like those little lumps floating around in water. You've been gravy or something like that. So that's my glue. I'm going to add a little bit of water into that which I use my water bottle, is that one? Dribble? I'll probably put too much in already. That's right. And you you got to create a paste first. You must wear a mask with this. It's urea formaldehyde, which is a carcinogen. Okay, so we're getting to the first stage. Let's break them down. Good. At the moment, it feels sort of almost chalky. Eventually, I might have to get a heater on. I'm just going to put this heater on again. Let me show my heater. If you haven't seen it already, it's a, a gas heater. And first of all, we have to turn the fan on first. Once you've got the fan on, you turn your gas bottle on, which is here. Let's turn it around. And then you, you feed the gas and, and ignite it. So now we've got flames 
Flames are up. The only thing is you don't want it on for too long because it takes all the oxygen out of the room. So anyway, let's get back to it. Let's put you over there. Um, we need a bit of warmth because you can't use this glue. It's below a certain temperature. I can't remember what that temperature is. But if you, oh, I'll tell you one thing, it just it won't mix properly. So, especially just small quantities like this. So you get the temperature up basically. Right, I've done that first, but I'm going to put that near the fire for a second while we clean up a bit. This, that warms up. So we've got our two dowels. They're going to be glued into this piece first. I've um, got a bit of lumpiness there. So we'll remove that. <laughs> The only thing with pie, it splinters so easily. It's not my favourite timber. Most of my work was done in oak here. Now this little mat here, it's quite a good little thing actually. It's, um, it's one of them dashboard mats. See so things will slide about. It's okay. I've got a I sometimes use a bit of carpet and old, you know, carpet's just as good if not better. Just stop things from sliding about if you're trying to work on it. And the thing is, the best thing to use is one of them uh, non, oh, non, uh, the acoustic mats, you know, they're a thick rubber mat, which I've got two of them and I can't even see one of them at the moment. They're about right, isn't that? I can't show you that because I can't see it. Yeah, they're, they're like a thick. Um, the only thing is they do mark a bit of wood, but so as this, you see these dots here, on there, those dots, <laughs> that's come off this rubber. So that's going to be mounted on there, and then that is going to be mounted on there like so. Literally. That's the plan anyway. For my phone holder for my desk. But this does need a little bit of sanding. There's a possibility you might need to add a little bit of black paint to it as well, but you'll still get the effect. Just gently sand it. So I want to see a little bit of grain coming through. That's it. So you get that ebony look. That's it, just soften it a bit. Because that looks a bit grotty at the minute. And that doesn't. A little bit of grain. On my desk in the um, studio, I've got an ebony figure um, of a uh, astronade. I, I, I can show you my next stream up there. I will be doing a series of videos up here for the woodworking as well in the off, in the studio um, about well one of the, one of the things I want to do is about history of woodworking and the history of tools. Quite interesting subject actually. People don't realise how um, how far yeah we're talking about Egyptian times you know some of these tools how far they date back. So in some cases quite similar in their in their working as um, some of the tools that we use today, hand tools that is, obviously. I quite like that now, that's quite nice. That become darker when we lacquer it, because it's going to be lacquered and so is all the, all the pine. It has to be, because it's just good dirty and grubby. Now this piece here, I can say to myself, okay, I could leave that maybe, and that is going to be fixed there. I can either screw it down, or I can put a dowel in it or something. Um, and then that would be resting on there as well. Not that one, that's the, that's the back. <laughs> that one there. So, um, but I won't do that until that is mounted. Because this, you know, all I'm going to do is literally... Well, I don't do anything really, because that'll still stay there, but... I've got to obviously fix those two together there. That to there is easy enough, but I don't want that to be ugly at this point. Yeah, where it mounts onto here. So it needs to be quite um, non oh, obtrusive. So that might be just a little dowel. 
which I don't know if I've got any made at the moment. Oh, yeah. I've got some, well, I can either make some dowels up, I don't think I need to, because I'm just going to use a little 6mm dowel like so. So we'll have one of those going through that way. And you could draw right through here and just clean it off if you wanted to, or we just line it up and do it that way. Um, best way, really. First of all, what, what I, would, I would prefer to do would be to mark up from the back and then draw all the way through with a little thin drill bit, a little 16th or you know, one point, one half mil drill bit, and then drill right through that into that, and then glue, you know, push that down, <laughs> fingers and thumbs, and push that down all the way through, securing that at the same time. Yes, that will need trimming off here and cleaning up on here, but you just end up with a little wooden dot, which is fine. Most times you have a tablet sitting on it. The bottom bit here, you could do, you could do the same here in the bottom. I'll do that as well. Or you could put a screw in it. You're not going to see it. A dowel would be nicer. And being as I've got some six mil dowels, got a couple left there. Um, we will do that. I think so. First of all, we need to glue it together. Um, a glue, yes, that's a bit of temperature now. It's got a bit of a glaze to the actual glue. So I carry on mixing, and what you'll find is when you're mixing this stuff, it, it, it seems to get wetter <laughs> as you mix it. It's a bit odd, you know. I'm not adding any more water as it is. It's actually got, as it absorbs the uh, powder, you get this like, like a glossy sheet, sort of glossiness to it. And like I say, this glue, when it goes off, it's rock solid. So first things first, we're going to whack a bit of glue into there. Let's get the cam up a little bit. I'm getting the point now where you can't breathe in there with this heat. <laughs> I'll grab a stool. I'll sit down and do this. A better angle. Right. So I can't breathe now because of the blooming heater. There you go. That's better. Right, so I'm going to apply the glue into these holes. Like I say, I'm... I did mess up, as you know, live on my channel. How stupid was that? <laughs> Who's I dare doing this live? And I've got my two dowels, which are at the right length. And I've got to slide one into there. That might ooze a bit of out. Yeah, it has. So it's oozing a little bit out there. I want to ooze a bit at the front, though, as well, so it's not, not enough in there yet. I want to ooze out because I want to fill that hole where I messed up. Yeah. Then you do the next one. That one. They will. They've still got room to manoeuvre about. They get. They got. Yeah. Side to side for alignment. That's why the the festival dominant down has a little lever on the top. Mark one and two. You know, a bigger dot and a smaller stuff. Oh. A line, a longer line, and a shorter line, and that depicts the width of the actual slot. And the idea being is you have one slot tight and the other one loose, and that way it helps with alignment. Push that into there. Bit of wiggle, make sure it's on the sore surfaces. There you go. This is an overkill, to be honest. It's a flipping phone holder. <laughs> it's not gonna come apart, I'll tell you. No. Right, on there like so. And I'll mix a load of glue up, so I'm gonna use it. I say loads, I'm not that much in there, but let's make sure we've got enough in these holes, so we can make sure we've got contact. Like I say, the nice thing about this glue, it's rigid. And it's good for this job. It's not so good on other jobs, though. So jointing it's great. Um, veneer work is not great, because you get a lot of movement in veneers. So. I'm 
that we're going to it's going to ooze out a bit and what I'm going to do is a way of clamping it together we'll put a screw in it instead of a clamp from underneath and that way I can carry on get it together so it's really squeezing the glue out now, you see that? So I'll put one clamp on there, just to make sure it pulls up nice and tight, which I did have one there a minute ago, there it is. It's a little awkward because of a funny old angle. I could use the vice actually, just clamp it up. This is going to be a bit weird. It's not going to like this. It should squeeze up, so that's it. All right, so I'm going to now mark the bottom in line with this middle so I can get my screws in. Let's see where it's going to go. You've got to think about this angle, you see, you don't go here, so I need to go there, which is about there. But let me go at an angle. I'm going to use my airline drill for that. Mark the bottom with a square. Got a line on the bottom there. And I'm just going to put a couple of screws there. It don't matter, really matter where they are, as long as they're not in the dowels. Even then, it wouldn't really matter that much, to be honest. But it wouldn't do its job or anything. So I'll get my airline drill, which happens to be here. Line it up so it's in line with the back. And we'll just put a couple of screws in. And we don't want them in where the dowels are. Right. So one back there. Well, that is sharp. <laughs> and what about here? <laughs> God, that is blunt. Grab a battery drill. A little bit of sharp than that. I don't throw drill bits away, I just sharp them. When you get the hang of it, it's quite easy. Obviously you get to a point when you have to throw away because the angle all goes and you don't know where it is. You can get um obviously uh <laughs> Obviously you can get a um, drill sharpens, but they're not very good on small drill bits. Right, how long? It's in a bit I've just used, probably quite long. I've drilled quite deep with the drill bits. Just, I could have got away with the inch halves, but I don't think I can. Have a look, might be able to. So that's an inch half. That's an inch half eight, so about four and a half mil. Five, um, by 35, 35, these are 40, so an inch half, inch three quarter. Look, that's fine, inch half it is. Squeeze that up nicely. And just that extra little bit, you know, just while it's going off, you know, while the glue's setting, allows you to, you know, get on with something else. Yeah, the next stage, for instance, which is going to be fixing our, um, well, Death Star into place. Yes, I like Star Wars, I know. I'll tell you what I like about Star Wars. It's, it brings back positive memories in my life. Things that I really enjoyed, you know, as a kid. Star Wars is one of them. I just, I just loved Star Wars. I still do. Not so keen these days since it's been Disney. Although I might um, subscribe to Disney again so I can watch Mandalorian. <laughs> I 
I don't want to do it just yet though. I'm going to wait a bit. I'm not desperate for it. So um, if I wait a bit, I don't have to do it for so long because there'll be more more episodes available, won't there, online? All the same, that's only been about five a month anyway. It's about, yeah. <laughs> Ain't very expensive. <laughs> the nice thing about the listeners, you can stop your Disney subscription <laughs> and restart it whenever. <laughs> And what I did is last time, I, I had a, a, basically a Disney fix, or a Mandalorian fix. I binged on it. <laughs> I think I paid back two months in the end. When I realised why well, I'm still paying for this, I've already watched it all. I'm not interested in Alice in the or Frozen, whatever it is, I don't know. Kiddie type stuff. I'm trying to um, sand with wet glue, which creates a whole muddy looking, yeah, dirty looking look. So I don't want, so I want to be able to finish this off. I might not be able to put the lacquer on this portion completely, or if I do, I might um, have to do it again after the stream, once it's dry, because otherwise I'm going to end up with a real muddy looking pine. I don't want that. Now, where is my Bed at heater. It's so quick, it's warm in there already. Where is this one? There's one of the little hand sander. Now this little thing here came from Lidl's, believe it or not. Brilliant little um sanding block, two little spring actions either side. Brilliant, oh, that was like two quid. Somehow like 299 euros it is. I wish I bought two of them. Quite handy have one, yeah, different size, yeah, different grits. Yeah, so you can just work your way down the grits really quickly and easily. I do I use a lot of this um, certain carbide paper. This is the white, you know, the grey stuff. It's quite often sold for use with um, sanding paint and what you know, but I use everything. You don't clog as quickly, you know, yes, very good. Or you use wet and dry paper if you sealed at first. That's what I did. If you, look, if you watch the video, you'll see when I was polishing it up on there, I was using wet and dry paper on the lathe. Water. So I'm playing about with this. I haven't even seen, had a look yet, have we? To see whether or not the tablet works okay on it. Need a bit of clean up there. I might even get a little light dust in the white first. Just light dust and let it dry off as well. I think that'd improve it a little bit. Proof the look. I'm not a lover of pine, you see. And I don't want ah perfect angle, would you say? The perfect angle. That really, that is actually strong enough like that. It actually doesn't need that brace because you've got an actual joint. It's not just screwed together. An actual joint. Now, if you're using pocket screws, you'd be relying on little thin bits of metal, you know, on your joint. Because start it can bend if there's any force put into it. And everything, this is rubbish. I, I, I just really don't like pocket screws. Sorry. It's not me. <laughs> I understand people use them because they're quick. <laughs> so what I, what I think I will definitely, definitely put a little bit of white on that before I fit the... Um, Death Star. <laughs> so, boys, I think it's going to look a bit dirty looking. <laughs> I'll tell you what I like about these sanders. I like the electric ones. You've got a lot more control. It's all on this lever here. So that, you're not like being whizzed around all over the place. I 
this is not an expensive one. This is not, not a Merca, um, which is like 300 quid. <laughs> it was like 30 quid. Fits with him cheap. This one isn't very good. The um, one, the blue one at the back there, that's actually this one here. That is also around 30 quid. There's a far better machine than this one. <laughs> now, with air tools, if you're not used to air tools, you need to know that you do need to um, lubricate them. And you use a special kind of um, oil, airline oil, which I've got a bottle of here somewhere. I can't even see it. I know it's at the back here. Um, and you just put it down the end here. You can get the inline oil in, so it does it automatically for you. The other thing you've got to make sure you do is empty your compressor very so often, because in the cylinder, if you've got a compressor with a cylinder that are filled with water, you'll get like a little water in the bottom, you have to drain that off. Even more important, if you're, if you're spraying, obviously what it'll do is I'll pick that water out and put it into your paint. If you're spraying it, you don't want that. I've seen it before, you get those little droplets in the paint, little water droplets. So it's not very helpful. So, um, okay, so that's fixed together like so. Like I said, I'm just going to get the um, a little bit of white paint out of my cupboard over there. I might take you with me to my cupboard. Oh, which happens to be really high. I have to climb up on the cupboard on the big saw bench to get to it. It's not a problem, it's really easy. I put a little foot rest, you know, a little um, step, so you can actually look like a little foot hook thing here. Anyway, I think we're ready to get a bit of, bit of a, a little blow over, a little bit of white, just to keep that. I want to keep it light. I don't want it to look, you know, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to make it white white. I just want to just blast it a little bit, just to, so it's not so, uh, well, fine. <laughs> I know all timbers these days are expensive and all that. Pines are very useful timber. Um, unless you get nice pine, like yellow pine, some yellow pines and stuff. You know, they're all pretty shit. <laughs> oh, people like that. Are we born in a barn? I don't know. Never born closing cupboard doors behind you. Oh, let's go in the cupboard. Can I see the white? Is there white to hand? We've got our clear. Carl. That's not fair, so we'll be using that again. Uh, got mats over there, what's this one? Green, I don't want green, no. I know I have white, it's just not there. So, let's go up and get it. So that's a little footstool thingy there, you know, a little step. So I walk up that. And I, oh, I stand on my bench here. Oh dear. Oh, how they bang my head on the cupboard. Shut that, oh my God. There's no oxygen up here either. Yeah, there's all the white is up here. <coughs> he put it all the way up here. That was silly. I've got an empty cupboard. Put something in there. For the sake of it. That's gold. Uh, I don't need gold, I want white. Black, black, hope. That one feels like it's been part used, maybe. Ugh. Can't tell. That'll do. It's white. That one's white as well. That looks an older can, so I'll use the older one, the older design. And that one's a high gloss. And that one, oh, they're both high gloss. So it's just literally the same thing, but different cans. This is the older style, so it's older paint. So we'll use that one first. Down we go again. Oh dear. Ugh. Not good jumping with slippers on, no. Over here, over here we go. I don't really want to spray on top of everything. So I'm going to use, I could put a corner up right here. What's the problem there? You didn't see that, did you? No. I just, I just knocked the edge, the lid, lid off on the corner. So, a bit lazy. I need a little spray booth is what I need. That would be very handy. So just a light dusting on there. I don't want to lose the pine altogether, I just want to almost like 
dark, sort of more of a bleach look, I mean, it's like a lime look. So once that dries a bit, I'll get another little sanding. But also, it seals the wood, makes sanding a bit easier. The end grain will soak it up like crazy anyway. That's the only thing with um, pine, especially with pine, or any open grain timber. It'll take a lot of paint before you actually get anywhere near putting a finish on. Where primers and uh, and undercoats are important. Anyway, that'll do that. So I'm going to put this down here near the heater, and let that blast that. Hopefully, the heater don't set light to it. So I'll put it on the floor down there, so it's going to get a bit of a rab and dry. There's no flames coming out the end of the heater, no, good. I want a bit more paint on there, I think. That's better. Probably didn't see that, did you? So anyway, um, so we're at that stage now. Think about this Death Star. This is him. That is. So, we've basically got a tablet stand, and now I want to install him into the tablet stand once I've managed to get that dried off over there, and then uh, turn that around. Also, so that thing's more likely to be a paint stripper than a <laughs> blue torch. So, I've got to make sure all my little edges, I'm happy with all these little edges, but I am actually, they're not too bad. I don't be too pedantic, and at the moment it's got a bit of a purpley sort of look to it. Three, a coat easy in some ways because it'll be easy to get these surfaces done. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll just um, find something to put it on, such as that. There's nothing that I'm not worried about getting lack on, is there? Oh, it's not a bit oh, stable enough. What have I got? That's what we do. There's a gentle coat of lac on there. You know, clear coat. Just to seal the surface a little bit, just uh, manual on the bits that I'm not going to get to once it's together. Like these bits. And you can see, it's getting, it's, as I do it, it becomes darker. At the moment it's got dull, isn't it? So I'll do that, down the middle, you can see it darkens up. More black, it becomes blacker. I haven't checked these chats for a while, have I? You like giant dogs in Star Wars, are you talking about the ats? A walker. Hot glue, yeah, I got hot glue. I may use it though, hold things together temporary. Yeah, you know, while I'm actually doing something else with it. A domino is like a raw plug or do I'll tell you something if you can do as a trick, while I'm waiting for this to dry, um, with a dowel, let's say for you've got a wall cap cupboard like one of these wall cabinets, and the screws holding the hinge into the door. For instance, if it's um, the screw keeps pulling out you know, all the threads in the chipboard of the door, or MDF, have uh, literally been shredded. Just drill it out, just, little, just to the depth, not right through, obviously, because you don't want to see it on the other side. Just drill it out to about 8 mil and put an 8 mil dowel in. I don't know if I've got any in here. No, I haven't. Or an 8 mil dowel in, in your case. Um, let it dry, a bit glue, let it dry, and then screw into the dowel. And then you've got a repaired kitchen door. It ain't going to fall off in five seconds. It's a really easy job doing. Anyone can do it. Just be very careful as you're drilling it. Ideally, do it with a drill with a depth stop or even a pillar drill. Um, but if you haven't got that, you could just use a bit of tape around the, you know, around the drill bit to its depth and just gently ease it into the hole as you're doing your repair. As you probably see, this is already nearly dry. Yeah. And up there, it's still wet there. It's on top, it's all soaked in. Oh, you can't see it, all the torment. 
sweating. <laughs> so it's already nearly dry now. It's, it's for a car paint, for a car spray basically, it's an acrylic. It's still very wet on that side. You can see that was shiny. But it's drying. And I'll just lightly sand that before I put it together. Because the first coat just lifts the grain a little bit. And this bit's oak, but the rest of it's just pine. Because I just want that contrast. A bit cherry would look nice. Or even more than that. Now that is almost dry. And I've got to sand that um, again. Now, I, I might use that, but the thing is, this is dirty on there now. It's going to make whatever I'm doing dirty. So I don't want to do that. So I'll probably put new, new discs in it. New discs in it, or just hand sand it. The thing is, when I'm making stuff for customers, I end up with a lot of cross cuts here, little bits of wood like this. You know? You go to the workshop, that ends up being going into the wood burner. But I look at that and I think, oh, I can make something out of that. It's a bit like what we did with the um, tea light in the lathe the other day. So that is getting very close to being dry enough. We'll put near the heater, give it an extra blast. How's this doing now? So that is almost dry now. Still a little bit tacky, I don't, I don't want to try and sand it just yet, so I'm just going to give it a, another minute and then we'll just hand sand that and then we'll put the whole thing together before we actually then lack of the whole thing to get, you know, lack of the whole thing. But it's, um, my fingers are dirty as well, got dirty dusty fingers. So put that back down there to dry a bit more. Move this out of the way, my wax. The thing when you're doing the videos, you look for quick finishes. You don't, you don't want things to take too long. If you're going to use something like a chalet based um, uh, varnish, for instance, like a, like a yacht varnish or, you know, high, some high cost varnish that happens to be oil based, you know, where you use a solvent to thin it out, well, then obviously it'll take very long. And especially in the atmosphere as it is at the moment, being humid, um, it's just going to take way, way too long. So I'm going to chat with you guys for a bit. I'm just waiting. Give that a couple more minutes. A minute will probably do, but there you go. Have that. Dee, 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 dee. Now, the, the, the Jasper, the the domino and a biscuit joiner are not the same things at all. Um, the biscuit joiner is a great machine to use when you want to join two pieces of wood like this. Edge on. Green for that because it, it what it does is it prevents the timber, um, it cuts alignment. So, your glue, especially if you're using PVAs, so yeah, cameras over there, if you're using PVAs, your glue has a certain amount of slip, even when it's dry. And what can happen is if you do a tabletop, if you've got no alignment uh, mechanism, like a mechanical fixing or some description, you, what you can slide and create ridges in, in your top. Yeah, it's like, but if you use something like that, or a biscuit, which I could show you biscuits. Well, what have I done with biscuits? I think, well, I think well, I'll put them on. <laughs> anyway, a biscuit joiner, um, or, the, or the domino, you, you prevent that slip. The biscuit, because they're only about that wide, and they're like, that biscuit looks like half a biscuit, you know what I mean? Sort of a semicircular sort of teardrop, sort, not teardrop. Oh God, until I find one. Ha! I have been organised. Give an idea that, you know, well, obviously I don't use that much, they're covered in dust. So these, I, I keep these in, um, oh, Ziploc bags. I'll show you. Because I've got to get humidity. So if you've got any biscuits, Domino's not a problem, but biscuits, if you've got any biscuits like these things, which are like pressed beach biscuits, such as those. Yeah, they swell up in the moisture. They take on moisture, it makes them fatter, and they end up being fatter than what your cutter is. So it's about a pain in the neck to get together. But these, 
are great for alignment purposes, but strength-wise, remember these can I can do 140 mil long. I can, because I can cut 70 mil in, in each direction, it's 140 mil of joint. Whereas that, you know, it, that is the that is the width of the joint. Not a lot, is it? And also the thickness of it, not much strength in it. You know, at the moment that's a 12 mil. I've got a 12 mil cut. I can do a 14 in that machine in its width. And there could be multiple ones of those if you want, or you can just do big ones with this machine. These, these could be double the width if you want. In fact, I've got one down there, so I could show you what that involves me getting up. <laughs> so that's a biscuit, a lamello, yeah? And that is a Festal Domino. Well, that's actually one I've made, which just literally done move around over a bit onto a piece of oak for which I've then run through the, through the thicknesser and obviously for the saw to create my own. Because you can create big lengths off, you see, and then you just chop them up to soup. But anyway, that's a biscuit, and I don't recommend them for, for the purpose, for a lot of purpose. That's been alright for what we just did, be fine for that. Plenty strong enough. But um, I don't, not for joint work. Uh, I don't know if you remember like Norm, Norm Abrams, uh, New Yankee Workshop, it used to be, oh, is it Dave? Yeah, I think it's Dave, Channel Dave. And, um, and although, was it Dave? Not Dave. Was it Dave? Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, was it Discovery Channel? Might have been Discovery. Anyway, whatever it was, um, he used to use plumbing biscuits for everything. He used to even put cupboard doors together with biscuits. Like, for instance, um, cabinet doors. He'd biscuit all the corners together. I, I, I thought that was shoddy, personally. And the man is a craftsman. He knew exactly what he was doing. But he's, um, I thought they're, 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 I, think back, I think they can be a bit lazy. You know, they, they have a place. Just not for jointing, as in, like, proper fixed corner joints and stuff. Like in the frame. But great for jointing boards together. Pretty much what they're designed for. I've got to be going here three hours. Froggy. Hey, hello, Mad Monk. I really enjoy your woodwork project. It keeps me thinking of what I could do with scraps of wood. Okay, I've built a shed with a bar on the side from scrap pallet. What a bring idea. An old wooden deck, and why the hell not? You know, a friend of mine actually did a similar thing to that. He's um, just down the road. He's actually sold the house, actually, but um, he did another project. But uh, Andy, he made like a garden playroom for, the, for his kid out of old pallets and stuff like that. He made a really nice job of that. A concrete base, he made a concrete base first, which was ridiculously thick, to totally like, yeah, it was like six inches thick concrete. And why, I don't know, I think it's because they had it. But um, anyway, he created this base and then built this wooden structure um, on top of it, using whatever he had laying about, or windows and stuff like that. And he did a really nice job of it, I, I must say. Yeah, it is what it is, but it's, you know, it, it, yeah, I liked it, I thought that was quite cool. So it must be dry enough, though. I hope so. I hadn't caught a light, no. With that wood burner going, that flamethrower going. Of course, heat coming out of that. But that's perfectly dry. Excellent. So we've got our two components, that one and that one. You can see why now, can't you? Why I wanted to have it a bit lighter. So you get the contrast, it's a bit cooler. I'm going to have to turn that heater off. Oh my god. Blimey. Plug it as well. The fan goes off. Good though, because I'll come in here and I'll do a little bit of you know, like video like this one. I can blast that on and get the room, the workshop a bit more sort of a bearable. So we can actually get on with something and then, uh, yeah, turn it off again because you can't breathe. Right. Okay, so I've got this. It's now had one little light coat of white paint, aerosol, and I just want to give it a light sanding. I was thinking about using it, but I think that's going to mark it badly. I want to say mark about because it needs a new disc in it. So I could put a new disc in it, I suppose. I might just be lazy, not put a new disc in it. I need Velcro for Christ's sake. Did he, did he sort of sand in the back of it? So what's happened is the paint's obviously lifted the grain. Which then, you then take off all those little fluffy bits of the sandpaper. This thing's okay, but it can deposit marks onto your workpiece. 
sometimes the carpet is a bit, a bit of old carpet. The main concern now is making sure these areas where the uh, Death Star is going to go is uh, well done because you, you're not going to be you're not going to get to the edges very easy once it's on higher. The rest of what I can do once it's together. Dee, 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 dee. And also, I can do a bit of lacquer on it as well once it's completely finished. But you no know one's got to want to wait for that because I've got... it's exactly what it is waiting for paint dry. So, we're going to fit the Death Star first, and then I'm going to put a couple of coats of lacquer on, and then I'll have to um, allow it to do its, you know, do its thing. You know, got dry, might bring it into the house. I'll do it off camera for that last stage. But we've still got this to fix as yet, so don't go away just yet. I'll show you how I'm going to do it. It's going to be simple, I hope. <laughs> I've got to double check that that's because I haven't actually trimmed that, but it is pretty good. So I'll place it on the back and make sure it sits just on its own at a sitting level. Yes. <laughs> it could be a little bit better, but is it worth? Messing about with? No. It is such a minuscule amount. So, as I offer it on there like so, what I need to do, I've got to mark this exactly where it's going to go. I don't want to mark it where you're going to see it. So I'm actually going to put this off, move this over off centre, so I can then put the marks where it'll be hidden. I know where the middle is. The middle is literally where the joint in the wood is. Yeah, that's my guide. That's where I want the actual Death Star to be mounted. So what I want to do is, is make sure my marks end up on the actual line where the joint is. So I'm going to place it beside it. Now the point is, as it's uh, getting around a little bit, let's move you around like so. The point is, where I put these marks is obviously where I'm going to drill I don't want to see. Um, I don't, well, I don't. I just don't want to see it. I do, do not want to see like a hole or anything like that because it just looks shoddy. So I've moved it off centre. So wherever I put these mark, this mark here, I'll put one there. Yeah, you're not going to see it because the actual Death Star will be over top of it. And then I've got to think about. I want that where on the round. You can see it just there. So I've got two marks. There's two holes I've got to drill. And what I'm going to do to drill those two holes, um, I'm going to go all the way through. I'm not worried about using alignment pins or anything like that for this job, because you can't alignment pin that and that at the same time. It won't work. The reason for that is because you'll be creating like an angle of distance. Uh, there'll be an error. It just, take the word for it, it just won't work. And these are like, that's like an angle of, um, like a pin. You drill your, your hole the size of the actual, um, dowel you're going to use, you put that in the, into the hole, and then you push down onto it, it creates a little point or a little dimple into the opposite side so you know exactly where the opposing hole's got to be drilled. But we're not doing it that way. I'm literally just going to be, once I've got it into place, I might then put a screw to hold it down from underneath, and then drill all the way through for a dowel from the bottom, but also from this face here. And just sand them off flush, and, I'm, and I'll be happy at that. I'm not going to, uh, you know, there's no point in bit, getting paranoid about whether or not you're going to see a little tiny dot of wood. Because uh, it's only, what, six mil. It's literally going to be a bit of beach. So you'll get a little dot here in the wood. Oh, I don't think that's a problem. But first of all, I'm going to need to drill two small holes with a little battery drill. I can grab my battery drill, which is down here. And I've got to draw a bit around there somewhere. But I saw a minute ago. <laughs> I'll put it down somewhere. I can't see it, so I'll get a different one. I will get one I didn't prepare earlier. There you go. Hopefully it's not blunt. So I'm literally going to drill all the way through here. Like so. So that tells me where I've got to drill from the back once I've got the first stage in. But also, 
I'm going to put another hole beside it, which is going to be, I wish I put that one in front of it, here, which is going to be more temporary. Well, it'll be temporary, it could be permanent, so I'll keep it in. I'm going to put a screw in there. So I'm going to drill that. It's all the way through. And then I'm going to use my airline. It could be any, you know, it don't have to be the airline, you can use whatever you want. It's got a canvassing bit already fit on it, which is quite good. Which is that one here. That one. Like so. So I've got a little, yeah, ready to, to accept a screw into the bottom of this. But I've got a pilot hole that as well. So I need to mount that about where it's got to be to cover those screw holes up. I want to make sure it goes in the middle, basically. It needs to be a pilot hole. So what I'll do is, I won't actually drill the way through, or pilot hole the way through just yet. I'm going to check it. And make, see, if I did that, it wouldn't be in the middle, would it? And now I risk of splitting a bit of wood. So, but I know, I know that how far away it's got to be from each end here now. So I'll just do it 90 degrees on the edge. Just do it, but I'll get it in the middle. So what screw I'm going to use. Hmm. Don't want to be that's going to be going into there like so. Leave it up there. Got to be careful. You don't want to go because I'm drilling to oh, I'm screwing to oak. Remember, so I've got to be careful. I don't end up um oh I'm going to try and screw too far into it. One thing, it would literally just feel like it's going to try and um well split your bit of wood. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. So now I'm going to screw that together. Now I'll hold this in place while I do the dowels. Obviously I've got to make sure it's in the right place. It should be because I've already done the pilot hole. So now that's fixed into place. Let's make sure it lines up right. Make sure that's not, make sure it's perpendicular to this edge, which is not yet. Just eye it up, eyeball it. That's what I'm doing. And now all I've got to do. Do you know what I didn't do? <laughs> Let's take that off again. I made a silly mistake. I hadn't actually put the hole in here with the, with the small drill bit. I did the bottom. I'm so concerned with the base. I didn't do the back, so we must do the back now. And that isn't going to have a screw in it. You could if you want, it's up to you. I'm going to be using the dowel. So first of all, we need to screw this back on again after I messed up just then. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Oh, it fell out. Screwdriver bit fell out. In there, line it up again. Make sure that's perpendicular with this back edge. It's gonna be pretty cool though, isn't it? <laughs> you can put little rubber feet on the bottom if you want, so don't slide about. Because that's what I'm gonna do. You can even do it on the back here if you want. But I, I, on Caroline's how I put two bits of felt on one there, sort of one there on the back, so it doesn't. Also, it's not like a well, it's not supposed to really matter, really. But you could argue that that's a little bit over the top. Well, I'm looking at that, it's pretty much lined up that way, because that's the line that I was worried about, or that way, which looks good. But I'm actually going to put it a little bit further that way. That side's okay, and that one's okay. So now what I'm going to do is, so the drill bit don't wander, the bigger drill bit, I've got to put it through the 6mm, because I've got 6mm. Um, I'm going to pile that hole first. So it has a, yeah, because it's a start. So I just literally just drilled a small hole there. I'm going to do the same on this one. So I might even come to one side a little bit because I'm not really happy where that is. And that's come out. There. Good. Good that way. That's good that way. Good 
and I'm doing this so when I actually I'm putting this pilot drill in, even though it's not the size of the dowel, I'm putting it in so actually um there goes my drill, my compressor. So it actually lines up. So when I put the drill bit in for the dowel, it doesn't wander. It goes where I want it to go. Now we're going to need a six mil, not an eight mil. So I need a six mil drill bit because these are six mil dowels, and we can check that with a vernier. If I knew where it was. What's using the other day? There you go, that's not critical. Oh, it's over here. It was near the pillar drill. So we use the, the, with the, the vernier here, and we can literally just bring it into the bar, and then it tells you how big the dowel, how the diameter of the dowel, which is a six mil dowel, which means we need a six mil drill bit. So now I've done this with the dowel, so I can now find a drill bit that fits. Quite easy, really. Or you can use a drill guide. So we're going to come into the old uh, drawer here and see if we can find a 6mm drill bit. And at the moment it looks as though they're scarce. Where are my 6mm drill bits? So that's not 6mm, that's an 8mm. That's a brad point, 8mm brad point. Oh, my brad points are in there. Well, yeah, yeah they are. And when I was away, um, my family was well they were in here yeah and you can imagine aha here we go that is a got one a six mil brad point pit port uh, brad point bit it's got a little point on the end so let's use that i don't even know what's what we mean put anything in the voice or anything like that boy don't always need to, as long as you're controlled with what you're doing, you can do it by hand and by eye. To be fair though, I have been doing this sort of thing for a very long time, but even you know, I made a mess, I made, I cocked up, didn't I? Quite easy done. So now we're going to drill all the way through into that, and then the dowel will, will literally just, uh, well, what, what, I don't want any damage and everything because it's first stage of drilling. There we go, that's going in. Now we sort of want to give it a bit of clearance because what happens is that I'll try and grab, especially in pine. There you go. That should follow your little pilot hole. Should. So much of a problem in the bottom because you're not going to see it unless you like look at the bottoms. Maybe you do, so the, and that one will be going into the base. So, the thing about what we're doing is, is that everything the way it's all been fixed together, although there's one screw in it, or let's say, sorry, one, two, three screws in it, it's not really the screws that hold it together, it's, it's the uh, it'll be the glue and the uh, dowels and the um, dominoes. Saying that is probably an overkill. You want to double check that's deep enough, and you can do that with your vernier if you like, because you have this bit on the end here. So you stick it into your hole, and however far it goes in, like so, I would say that's plenty deep enough. Because it's, yeah, could go a little bit deeper actually. So I'll go a little bit deeper with that. I do. And now we can put a bit of glue in that hole there and a little bit of glue in that hole there. And then we'll slide a dowel in. I did have two dowels and I think I've only got one now. There's one. There's another one right there somewhere. Oh, it's in here. So we've got two little dowels. A little tiny little hammer. I 
water. Make sure I get a bit of glue into this in each hole. Ugh. Normally dry fit this first. <laughs> but I haven't. Oh, it's going in. I might as well clean that off once it's gone off. Make sure it's making good contact here. Which it is, can't see line of sight, light going through there. Gotta make sure it's obviously. So I've got that, that, that down now, it's going all the way through into the Death Star's nuz, this neck. And now we're gonna put one in the bottom, so to do the exact same on the bottom here. Like I said, this isn't, the way I've done this is a bit of an overkill. It's, you know, it's never going to come apart. But as they're saying, do I ever want it to? Don't forget, you, at a later date, if you no longer got a tablet, you can use it for like, like, a, pic, like put a picture on it or something. If you've got a little picture in the frame or something, there's no reason why you can put it on there. Or anything, in fact, anything you want to display. So I just want to clean that up on every chisel. Hopefully I can find one that's sharp enough. So I can just use a little firmer chisel, that do, it's quite sharp. I'm try and peel that off. And then I've got to remove this excess glue. The little Dale's Beach, in case you're wondering. I think I did mention that, but it's beach. Just look at the, um, oh, the, the uh, oh, look at that, biscuit joiners. These are just like little pressed ones that you buy, but I tend to make my own actually. I make my own dowels because I, I like to use the same timber that I'm working with, unless it's pine. Then I go harder. There you go, so that's on there. Now we just need to sand this up, clean this up a bit. You can just get left with a little dot. A bit of fine sanding until you're happy with it. I don't, but the, the idea of the white paint wasn't to make it white, it was to lighten it. So you still see the pine, you still see it's wood. You just don't, um, it's more of a, like a lime wash sort of look. Not quite lime wash, obviously, but I like these edges here, they can be exposed a bit. Yeah, depending on how far you want to go with it. You know, what, pedantic about it all? You know, it's your bag, isn't it? It's what you've got to do. Don't let anyone ever tell you that you can't do what you want to do. Unless, obviously, it's legal. But then they can. Oh. Like protesting, apparently. I didn't do politics, did I? Naughty me. So. It shouldn't have took three hours because I've been live streaming for three hours. There's no way that should have took three hours. Not with the gear I got. I'd have had that done in half an hour. Oh, I'll get two of them done, probably three of them done in an hour. Maybe. There, and there is the um, scroll saw that's to be done. You batch them, you get a lot out, wouldn't you? So, right, we have 
our tablet stand. Dun, 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 dun. And here is the tablet. And it is, well, it's a Millennium Falk. Not. No, it's a Death Star. <laughs> That's quite cool, though, isn't it? You know, if I lack it all up now and maybe a bit of sanding, it'll do the job. And I'm going to put some little rubber feet, non slip feet on the bottom to move about on the desk because that'll be quite annoying. Um, but it's it's strong, it does the job, and it's quirky. And I like quirky because I'm a bit quirky, so I've been told. So you could argue that that needs to be a bit further away to get a bit of alignment there, but if you look, that's a bit of an angle, but I would say not. We could do what I did over there, put a couple of felts on there, but to sit on, which I'll probably do anyway, but a little bit. But that's fine, as long as it's leaning back and doesn't slip at the bottom. You could put, wherever, wherever your cable exit is here, you could put a, a hole in here for it to clear, so you can charge it at the same time. But with this tablet, all I do is that. Cable come out the top because I can with this tablet because it, it allows me to, it, it, you know, obviously it's the auto rotate, not all the way, all, all phones auto -ro -ro rotate all the way around, which is really annoying. But this one does, but that could be anything, couldn't it? It doesn't have to be a Death Star, obviously not. <laughs> it could be a little doggy, it could be anything, it could be a cat, it could be an effigy of yourself, it could be a heart, it could be a cross if that's your thing. Be anything. It could be. I, I could. I could have done it all shorts. Or, you know, if we have a channel. Yeah. There you go. Does the job. Anyway, we've been doing this for three hours now. I don't know why it took three hours, but it's because I keep yapping, and you have to wait for paint to dry, don't you? And other stuff, and glue, and what have you. Let's see what's going on here. Hello, gingers. You want one? Does it have to be? Well, all artistic. The streams went all artistic, didn't it? It's all groovy, isn't it? Yeah, I call it artistic license more than anything. Um, Glasgow. As you see, uh, I mean, it's good, isn't it? It's quite, it's, I think it's quite cool. I think it's a bit of fun, isn't it? Yeah. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it's all sanded up nicely. But I've got to let it dry a bit first. And also, my little damage that I created because I was an idiot. I need to fill that properly and, and let it um, dry and. Or am I that worried? Probably not. I, I just, it's, I'm going to see it and it's going to annoy me. That's the problem. So I will sort that out. Um, yeah. I think it's quite cool. Yeah. It's better than the boring oak one. Although this is pretty substantial. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. It certainly does the job. Mrs. She loves it. She uses it all the time. I don't mind though. So it's got a Death Star. Got a Death Star, as it has. Anyway, don't forget to click like. And maybe subscribe if you haven't done so already. I know you guys, are, gals that are here at the moment, you, you already have. But, you know, you don't know. Some of you might be mad enough to watch three hours of, <laughs> of stream. <laughs> Crazy. I quite enjoy doing it, though. It's a bit of fun. I like, I like doing fun things. And scraps of wood. The best way to save the planet is not to buy plastic crap and to, well, reuse and use what you've got. One thing that doesn't involve you going anywhere to get anything for a start. That's probably where the worst damage is done with particulates and what have you with the environment. Talk about environment, I do want to build up my other channel. Now, I'm, I say the All Shorts channel, but I mean, my, another channel I've got which is uh, Earth Trifle. Which, uh, Obviously, got 60 subscribers on it at the moment. It's, it's really low, but I want, I'll have a work, have a, I want to try and build that one up. And it's, that's the eco channel, and obviously it's very current, isn't it? And um, yeah, it's quite a major, major issue. So just talking about eco type stuff, probably similar format to the other chat to all shorts. Um, but uh, you know, unless I really feel like it, I'm not going to uh, be you know derogatory on there. Not like all shorts anyway. They deserve it, they do. You know, too many idiots, isn't there? But yeah, it's, um, you know, anyway. A Death Star on a live, you could do. Why the hell not? Why don't you do, you could you just turn that sphere and chop a bit at the, at the back of it. I'll tell you what you could use. Um, I have an old burr, 
like a bit of old burr walnut. So you've got that old knobbly bit and you could lave it all up, couldn't you? So you've got all the knobbly bits where it's been blowing up at the back. And then, um, and then what you could then very carefully with the biography, get all the detail into the sphere. Then you think to yourself, why have I done this? What is it for? <laughs> it's a paperweight. <laughs> Oh, look, I'm sure you can find a use for it. A doorknob. But I do, a Death Star tea light, yeah, do that. That and the pixels. Ooh. Oh, I see, did it start um, buffering and going a bit stupid? I don't, think it's my, I don't know if it's my internet, because I'm streaming back at the same time. And that seems okay, or well, maybe that's why it's not streaming out very well. Oh, these bot comments. I've got a Gene Cummins bot comment. I've got something else bot comment. I've got another one. I've got three bot comments all at once. So they're all going to go and be blocked and reported. A Death Star fish. Fish? Why fish? Oh, starfish. <laughs> Silly me. I get you. Hello, Patrick, buddy. How you diddling? Yeah, I've been a little bit busy, haven't I? It's the second live stream today. No. I'm, I'm, as I said, oh, hell, what I'm going to do, um, I know I've said this before, but I want to do the multiple camera thing in here because grabbing the camera and dragging it around the workshop, while there's not, while there's not many people watching, there's not a lot of point putting, obviously, the expense into it. But as the channel builds up, we're going to be doing multiple cameras. So I have four cameras in here, that's the idea. Now, I'll either be using a thing called Stream Deck or I'll be using an ATM Mini, which is made by Black Magic Design. He also makes the software here, which I use for editing my videos, um, DaVinci Resolve. Um, and the idea being, so you just, all you've got to do is press one button and it, it replaces the camera, you know, just swaps from one camera to the next. So if I'm at the saw, straight to the saw. If I'm doing close work, close camera. You know, if I'm on the back, I'm over that, that area there, done. And then I'll have one camera that I'll use that I'll cart back with me as well. So that's that's the idea. And I'll run that through the PC. So I will be using a street we think called Stream Deck, or which is this like as a board with buttons on it, basically. Um, or the ATM Mini, which you can stream directly off it if you get the, um, still about four or five hundred quid that one is, but you can stream directly from it. It just makes the whole thing more polished. Um, at this stage, obviously, with this channel, it doesn't really matter too much. But I also want to do something similar to that um, in the studio, so I can, ha I can have two camera angles going. Not at the same time, but just for effect, just for a bit of fun. But just, just a small stream deck can work in there quite happily. You can do it anyway for OBS without anything, but it's a bit of a faff, um, a bit of a fumble. But yeah, I'll just sort of improve the channel and, and give myself a bit more time to work on the other channels. Oh, you're at home with a small hot water bottle up your shirt. 